Hey everyone and welcome to the one and only tutorial for Planet Zoo console that you will ever need. We are going to have a very long laid back chill tutorial in which I'm gonna guide you through every single bit that you need to know and at the end you will be able to build something like this. But before we talk about that let's quickly start at the very very beginning with the green canvas in front of you. So if you don't have anything to drink or some snacks or anything to sit down get it now because that's gonna be a long video you'll see that by the timer to the right hand side and I'm gonna go and do some chapters so you can go along but I highly recommend if you're new to the game that we are going to do everything together I'm going to tell you the things as we go so I'm not going to do everything like bit by bit in terms of uh, this specific part I'm gonna do this while we do certain things because I figure that is much more helpful for you guys than uh, showing you something and you have to remember it it's way more easy to learn the things as you are using them actually. So I will just briefly give you a introduction to Planet Zoo as a game and then we are already starting to do something. So I'm not going to go through the entire UI because we will learn the UI while we're playing but I will give you a little bit of an overview of the logic because the logic when you play with controller though um, is pretty similar to the real game on computer but then again it's super different as well. Now the logic is separated between the mini sticks and the arrow keys on your little, um, you know, uh, key, arrow key thingy, cross, however you call that on the console player um, thingy. So, um, what you can do is with the shoulder buttons, and it doesn't matter if you're on PlayStation or Xbox, it's basically the same. With the shoulder buttons, the upper ones, you can switch between the tabs down here. As you can see, I'm going through all the different tabs, and for those bigger ones, they will open automatically. And within each of the tabs, you are going to navigate with the cross, you know. Um, so, as soon as you are, for example, in here in Habitat, you can then move the things with the cross because as you move the mini stick you actually move the camera and within these groups you can always go forth and back with B and A or on the console actually this is on Xbox I'm playing on Xbox but if you're on PlayStation this is actually going to be circle and X I believe it is exactly like this and you can always filter things and this is the, the same logic everywhere you can filter things by pressing the Y key or the triangle so once you click that you're basically here in the filter menu where you can go through different filters we're going to talk about the filters as we play you know that's going to be a pattern for the entire video um, and whenever you want to leave a menu you basically press B or circle um, it's super easy to understand and once you have it you can just easily go through and the beauty of that is whenever you are in a menu like that you know just going through here you can easily switch to the next one by just uh, hitting the you know shoulder button again and then switch easily through these menus and you can see it's relatively quick you know it's relatively easy to access um, and you can just go through here you can also see that we have the staff members as one of the tabs down there this is a new tab that you don't have on the computer version because the computer version has everything sorted in the zoom menu which is a bit different in here because you will need to reach certain things quicker and this is why the staff menu is sorted down here in the tabs to be very much quicker in order to grab some of the staff menus and just you know throw them into your zoo then you can obviously tell um, with this uh, details button down to the bottom left you can see this is where your zoo management is if you click on that one you can either click in the zoopedia or you can right go into your zoo management. I'm going to quickly open the zoo management but you will see that this is going to be a little bit bigger and Honestly, I will not go through everything in here because this is mostly needed for your franchise zoos. However, I will just give you a brief overview of what each sub tab subcategory in here will tell you because this is in sandbox mode because you know it, there's no point in doing this tutorial in another mode because then you would need to unlock everything however if you play the game either in challenge or franchise this menu over here will be very significant for you um, however I feel like this is very well sorted by now and you can see everything 
uh, very neatly organized for you. So basically you have this overview tab, which already tells you, I would say 80% of what you need to know. You can see your average welfare of the animals, you can see your staff happiness, and you can see all the other things as well. Then if you go further, there is obviously a tab for finances. I don't really need to say more about that. You can get a loan, you can do marketing and so on and so forth. If you've ever played a management game, you know what that means. If you go then into the animal overview, that gives you a full overview of your animals. You can uh, have them separated into the um, habitat exhibit animals and also in food and quarantine as you know, subcategories to be easier uh, on what you need to see. Then you can also see the staff overview, very easy to understand as well. Then you have another overview, which is the vet research. At the moment, I don't have it because I don't have a research center. This is something we're going to talk about later once we talk about facilities. The next bit is the mechanic research. Yet again, you need a building for that, and we're going to talk about that as we put, put down the facilities. And then you also have the facilities, which I just talked about, um, as a subcategory, because as you know, no, facilities can actually break down, they cost you money, they will make you either profit or loss, and you need to have an overview of that as well. The education in this game is super relevant, because the better your education rating in your zoo is, the more willing your guests are to spend money on your zoo or to donate money for your animals. Um, and you obviously want to have that in order to make your zoo run, specifically in challenge mode and in franchise mode, and obviously if you want to play career as well. But career does guide you a little bit easier through that, so you don't really need to know that. One category that most of the people will barely uh, touch anyways is going to be the transport section. If you have ever played Planet Coaster, either on console or the real game, you will exactly know how that works. It's basically a ride inside of Planet Zoo. However, they have limited themselves to transport rides and they can go either on water, in the air with like a gondola or actually as a car. Then we have Memorials. This is an add-on that came later into the game. So maybe if you followed Planet Zoo let's say two years ago, and then you came back now for this very console version, they have added memorials along the way, which I think is a beautiful addition. So animals that you have grown in your park or that have that you basically have adopted and cared for and they passed away, um, they can have a memorial. And this also adds a tiny boost to the education rating of your zoo. But also you can see all your passed away animals in here as a memorial, which I find is like a lovely little touch. And then we have also the audio and visuals. This is also needed for like speakers and billboards for your education, but also cameras to prevent from crime scenes and stuff like that, pickpockets and so on. Now, in this menu, as you can see, it can be very overwhelming and you have a lot of subcategories. It would take half of the time for the whole tutorial to go through here, but you'll, you'll, you'll be fine, you know? You'll be going through here when you need it and you'll find the option you need. Um, I, you know, I trust in you. And whenever you want to go back, you can hit B, but also if you long press B, you're always going to go back to the main menu menu, okay? So you will always be back to this screen once you're back in the main menu. Um, two more important things to know is you will always have your X button as something very important. So once you hold down the X button, you can either go your camera up and down, which I think is very interesting and also very important at the same time. Now, there are different camera modi in this game and you will access them also by holding down X. As I hold down X, you will notice to the lower screen part, slightly to the right, that there is a sub menu popping up over here. You can see I'm doing it a couple of times. And as soon as you press that, the same logic applies as earlier. Um, you'll switch them from your mini sticks to the cross, you know, and you can then do a couple of things with your cross. Now, you can do redo and undo do with like left and right, which redo and undo is a beautiful feature in Planet Zoo that allows you to redo what you've just done or to undo what you've just done, which comes in super handy in building specifically. Now you can also hit play the game. Now game is running and you just pause the game by pressing down to, to the bottom. And if you press up, you can speed up the game or slow it down. Now, then you can also see two options with your shoulder buttons. The one, the right hand side is the one I click first is opening up the menu for weather options and for time options. Now you can see I'm on cloudy right now, but I want to go back here, for example, to uh, no weather effects, which is purely sunny. I'm still confused. This is the same as in every game. Um, this would be easier to just make it sunny because effectively this means no weather effects, which equals to sunny. But hey, who am I to judge? Then you can down uh, go down and change the time of day. You can either go in this uh, bit over here and change it this way which goes a little bit quicker. 
you know, press it back to 13, 12, and then just, just move over to the next one. You can even check it like this. Uh, and you're gonna go to 30 like so or if you're lazy you can also go down here and use the slider But the slider eventually takes a little longer, you know But might actually help you to find exactly what you want and above that uh, there is the day and night slider in general But if you are unhappy with what you've done, you can obviously always reset these press uh, settings One thing I may add is whenever you click a menu like that So for example, I'm going to show you the next one which is on LB the left shoulder button Whenever it's open, you can actually release the X key because then, <coughs> excuse me, then you will be inside of the menu anyways and there is no need for holding down that button. Um, I say that because I've been doing that for like almost eight hours now in the console version until I noticed that you yeah, don't need to. But anyways, in here you can uh, switch between the different modes. So the standard mode is um, the one I recommend for 99% of the people. But then there's also the free look mode, which allows you to steer like a little bit different. Now, in the free look mode, the right mini stick becomes a little bit of a different um, action because you can go actually up and down. So it's not centered around the uh, central focal point anymore, but you can move a little bit more like as in an FPS game, you know? Uh, this is basically the difference. Um, so you move up and down by facing the direction you want. So for example, like that, you go up and and down and once I switch back to the other mode um, you'll see that the focus point I'm gonna go back to the standard mode now I can't really do anything beyond that because this is gonna be always focused on the ground uh, over here which turn out to be a lot more uh, helpful when building to not completely get lost uh, with the controller but this is exactly where holding down X comes in handy because now you can actually move down a little so for example if you face like here but you want to go a little bit more down you can do it by holding down X and moving your left mini stick up and down. This came in super, super handy. Okay, now before we start, I will relatively quickly now go through the different tabs to the lower part of the screen until we reach the bulldoze tool and we will actually just bulldoze everything that you can see in the back apart from a couple of little things. Um, and I'm gonna then show you how to do a couple of things. However, let's first of all go through the menu. Now, we are going to start go all the way on the left. Uh, I'm just gonna click all the way to the left through here. This is going to be the animal tab. Like in the animal tab, you have a couple of options to either go to the animal market, purchase some animals, which we will do later on, um, or you can actually manage your animals by going in and see what your animals need, how the welfare is, and so on and so forth. Turning to the right hand side, there is the habitat menu. In the habitat menu, you will find all the items needed to make your animals happy. So enrichment items, food, water, and also resources for making them warmer or colder. Depending on what climate you're in, you need to adjust the climate, like the, the subclimate in your habitat. And there are also shelters and sleeping beddings. Going to nature is a very, very important uh, menu for you as well, because this is going to be the menu where you're finding all the nature to either make your zoo very nice looking or to make your animals happy because they require a certain amount of plants. Then you go into the facilities menu which is providing you with a lot of facilities for either your guest or your staff or your animals in, in a way. Well, not directly because it's just like power and so on. But most of it is um, for your guests or your staff members. So there are a lot of guest things like education need, but also food and drink needs. And for your staff, you obviously have staff rooms, research facilities and all that kind of stuff. So in facilities, you will find everything that is required to make your zoo properly work. Construction is everything that you need to make your zoo look properly according to what you've already built uh, but you don't only want to have it running you want to have it look good while it's running good so that is very very welcome but if for example you don't want to build everything yourself the next tab comes in very handy because this is the blueprint tab and in the blueprint tab as you can see there you will find a ton of prefab buildings that you can just simply build and bring them down you can just choose something here from the menu It'll appear in front of you. You can just then rotate this a little on your screen if you want to. We're going to talk about the controls of movement in detail, so don't worry about that. And just release when you're ready. But we don't want that. Click B, back in the menu. So you'll find a lot of these things. And once everyone is playing the game, um, I'm on the early access right now, so I can't show you because 
apart from a couple of people, there is no one online right now, so I'm not online anyways. Um, but once you're online, you can basically upload your own blueprint when you've created one, or you can download this from other players on your console. So either on the Xbox or the PlayStation, they will have their independent workshop to which they can upload files, and you can download them from other people who have already spent time building certain blueprints. And when it comes to console, you'll spend a lot more time on that. For sure, I'm, I guarantee you. The next tab we already talked about is um, the staff members. Very easy. This The path one we are going to jump real quick. Uh, I'm just going to open it so you see it. This is the path editor, but as we are going to start with this in a second, I'm not going to talk about this uh, too much in detail. And then the next one is going to be the terrain tool. Okay, So the terrain tool is uh, very important uh, to just adjust the terrain to your needs. But again, we will talk about that later. And the last one in here is the bulldoze tool. Now, this one actually has not been in the game from the beginning. This is another free update that Frontier brought to the game, um, I think a year or even two years later. What this tool does, and this is what, why we are going to start with this tool, that's kind of the, the reverse engineering here, but this tool allows you to quickly delete a lot what you've done. Um, and sometimes, if you just want to repla replace, for example, an entire habitat, this tool comes in super handy. Because you can not only delete a lot at the same time, you can also choose what you want to delete. So, in my case, at the moment, I'm only deleting nature and construction. So that means whenever I go about something like this, for example, over here, it's going to delete everything in here, um, but only construction pieces and not, uh, for example, the facilities or path things in here. But I want to have a specific selection this time around. And this time around, I want to have the nature, the construction uh, is going to go as well. Facilities and exhibits are going to remain. The path extras are going to get rid. The path itself will basically remain. The habitat objects, they will basically go away. The barriers will basically um, stay. The rides and tracks, well, we have none, but I'm still putting them on, and the water will also go, okay? So this is what we are going to do right now, and I'm going to basically delete everything. So you can see this in action right now. I'm going to hold down A, and this is going to delete everything. As you can see, I'm going to really, 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 really pump everything away, as you can tell. So there you go. We're almost done. Everything should be gone. Look at that empty bit of space over here right now. Okay, fancy, look at that. Now everything is gone and we have almost a blank canvas uh, on which we are starting. I could have gone and built everything from the very start, but I'm not going to do this because, well, you know there is one thing that I need to show you and this is like an overview of things that are possible before we start building with these. All right, I quickly made the guest uh, disappear. <laughs> so we closed the zoo to have everything in front of us, uh, you know, just for us, for us alone. And what we're doing right now is we are just, before we starting, we do one thing that is super important in this game, and this is planning, you know. You can see, obviously, I have already built a couple of things, um, and you can also see that there is a little bit of terrain paint down here, because this was actually before I had done a couple of other things. Now, what you will do at the very beginning, before you do anything else, with your build, you plan ahead. I know, it's a bit of an odd one because hold that thought. Here's Rudy from the future. Actually, we're not going to paint in here. I'm going to tell you all the terrain tips and tricks. But what you will do then is take the terrain tool and paint out the habitats that you want to have in the future. This is basically the part of planning I was talking about. But now let's continue with the tutorial. It's not the typical kind of uh, tutorial you will have. But we are going to actually start our journey not with the path thing, not with building, not with staff or animals. We are going to start with the terrain tool. And the good thing about the terrain tool is it comes with different options. Now, we have obviously the option to uh, lower down and, uh, you know, raise the terrain and do all kind of fancy stuff um, that I'm going to show you over here. So, for example, um, the tools itself is... Uh, uh, they are very simple to explain. It, you, can, you can actually think about it a little bit like working with clay. This game has one of the most powerful terrain editing tools in any game that you can imagine. It is voxel-based, and so you can basically do whatever 
whatever you want and it's super detailed and it has a lot of geometries like a lot of twists going with it for those of you who are a bit more into the technical part of things um it is super detailed now you have the sculpting modes the different ones and you can basically um do one thing and this is just pull up the terrain once you hold down a you can see you pull up the terrain and you can also see that the terrain itself starts to look a little bit different to the outside. This is because down here we have set it to auto paint. So it will automatically apply the things that it thinks is the best thing to do. So once it's deep enough, it's going to do some uh, some kind of rock to the sides, okay? So if we, for example, use the tool next to it, the uh, pull push tool, you can basically imagine what it's doing. It's pushing down the train. Not super surprising, okay? So the next one is the flatten to foundation tool, which is basically going to do exactly what it's saying. It flattens the thing back to the foundation. However, this will always be horizontal. It doesn't matter where you put the, the, your little arrow, as you can see. Um, wherever you manipulate it, it's going to be very much perfectly flat horizontal. The tool next to it is going to be exactly the different thing. The flattened to surface is, and you can see that already by this outer line over here, it's aligning to the uh, different angle that your terrain has. So for example, if we take this weird angle here, there you go, and you press A, you can see it flatten it to the side, and you can do some fancy stuff like that. This almost looks like a satellite dish from the side. Can we get some connection to the aliens? I don't know, but you know, this is very interesting. But then there's also the chisel tool, um, this one is really for advanced people. I don't recommend that at the beginning at all because this tool will allow you to sculpt a little like really as in working with clay. So you can really imagine you have a chisel tool to your hand and then you just search for the different face you want to adjust a little. So if you want to make this for example down here, you can just edit this a little bit out. It's, you know, it is super powerful once you got it, but it's nothing for a tutorial, but you just need to have a little bit of skill when it comes to terraforming and sculpting in general. So um, if you're just basic and you want to get started, just completely ignore the chisel tool, okay? Um, but one thing that you will need a lot is the smooth tool. So for example, over here, we can see this perfectly. There is like a very ugly edge over here. As you can see, this is a little bit too harsh. This is where the terrain just got a little bit jagged. And so you can smooth that out. If you don't like this, you just smooth it and you hold down. And as you can see now, it smooths out the terrain. Basically, what it does is it just takes a different... Um, points of the terrain and it levels them out to create something way more smooth okay you know the longer you hold down the more smooth this one becomes until it's just a very very subtle little hill as you can tell but if if this is not your thing and you want to have something way more roughed you can do this with the roughen tool and the roughen tool gives you the chance to do this like randomized and you don't need to do this yourself you know if i do this like so you can sometimes it's going to push into the ground sometimes it's going to go up sometimes it's gonna chisel sometimes sometimes it's gonna you know you can just do something very odd like this honestly this tool comes in handy if you want to do like a, a bit more of a natural looking area and then later on you do kind of adjust this to your liking but this one you get a bit more randomized terrain to make things look a bit more realistic um but then this last one over here is a bit of a tricky one this is a flattened to terrace tool and this one will give you the chance to build a terrace in which the water can be very shallow some of the animals can use shallow waters to wash themselves to take a bath so uh, for example the macaque can do this they will sit down but therefore the the, the water needs to be super shallow. Now, we will do this over here, and you can see the shallow pool offset is set to on, and the terrace height is set to two. I'm gonna bring it down all the way to one, and then you will find an edge. Now, you will need to understand that the game, if you are on the horizontal axis over here, this is, this is basically the zero point, okay? So whenever you are over here, this is zero meters, if, if you will, it makes no sense, but this is the zero point, okay? If you go lower, you go down one lower. If you go up, you go one up. Now, if I point my camera now on here and I've got the terrace tool selected, you will see it's gonna do exactly one thing. It's gonna go down one meter, exactly one meter from over here, like this, well, let me just point down, this is one meter down, and then there is this slight bit off, as you can see over here, on the side, and this is exactly the little shallow pool offset. So if I do say off, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, you will see that we still get this edge done, 
but it's not having this shallow offset over here. You can see down here, there actually, actually you know what, I'm just gonna quickly uh, put a bit of a different uh, texture to it so you can see that a bit better. So I'm just gonna get rid of the 3D grass because the 3D grass in this, in this case is not really helpful. Okay, now let's go back to these options. So you can see, with the terrace tool and shallow pool offset, there is this little edge in here. Without, it's not, okay? So you only have this very flat corner. Now, if you go to the size of two meters and you do the exact same, let's say, over here, you can see that the step the terrace creates is actually two meters versus one meter over here. And so you can basically create like certain certain areas very sharp edged, you know, um, if you want to do something like this in like a very sharp Arizona style mountain shape, for example, because Arizona has like some of these rough, sharp mountains, you can do so. But the beauty of that comes in when we do the water. But before we come to the water, let's quickly go through the terrain paint because the terrain paint is, uh, again, super simple to be explained. Now, by the way, down here, you obviously have always a choose to go a choice to go intensity wise. Obviously, the higher you make it, the stronger you paint, the lower, the less strong, and it's easier to blend certain things together. And once you want to go higher in size, you go higher. As you can see, you can cover like a bigger area at once. And the smaller you get, the more precise you can go. For the Planet Zoo nerds out there, you will notice that they did one thing that is super beautiful, which is, again, not in the computer version. So a couple of things they've actually done better in the console version per default. Now, the steps in which you're changing the size, they are not not one meter or one anymore. This has been the same, this has been the thing in the computer version. You have the steps of one. But with a trick, by using the hotkeys, you could un uh, enable the 0 0.2 point uh, clicks over here. That exactly this is over here. You're clicking 1, 1 1.2, 1.5, 1.7, 2 2.0. So it's going in a, uh, a couple of steps from, yeah, what is that? 0 0.3 meters? I don't know. But it's uh, better to have it this way because then you have a bit more control over how big they are. Um, on every map, you will always have the same choice of textures. You will always have grass short. You will always have grass long. The difference is that the short grass is only a grass texture as you can see over here and the long one is having these 3d grass thingies which most of the times looks better but not all animals like that so this is specifically for uh, animals that you know are in more like a grassy area in meadows or so then you have the soil in a light version and a heavy version just the difference is how the painting looks and then you've got the rock smooth and the rock rough again it's a bit of a difference in texture and then you also have the sand fine and the sand coarse however um despite the fact that annie wouldn't like it uh, the only type of those uh, that has two meanings for the animals is grass so a grass is a factor that is going to be separated so animals do separate between the long and the short grass but they do not separate between light or heavy soil or smooth or rough rock or cause of fine sand so it's sand is sand you know stone is stone and so on and so forth um, and then you also have snow which um, on a map like this if you paint this you will see it does appear but as soon as I release the key over here, it should then, if I hit uh, play again, um, it should disappear in a second. Or is that... That is actually a little bug. Because usually this should disappear now because obviously over here it is not as cold. So... <coughs> That is most likely going to be fixed, my friends, because usually this is going to disappear because snow needs a cooler to be um, staying here. So, you know, I have got a list of... Oh, look at that. Uh, now, if I move my mouse away, it's gone. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they are going to change this because I have painted snow over here. But as soon as I go over, you can see that there is only rock left. I'm not sure why this happens. Um, but anyways, um, just as a hint, if you want to have snow on a map that is not cold enough, and you can see that by the uh, lower right corner of your screen, we've got 26 degrees in this park at the moment. Uh, the snow is only going to stay if you have a cooler around. So that's it to the terrain paint. And if we quickly talk about the water, now you can see what the terrace tool did actually do. Now, let me just put the water in. And to put the water in, it's very simple. You choose the water. You have, this, um, you have the choice between calm and rough water. Um, the, the only difference between those two is the texture. The one texture looks like a calm, very gentle water, and the other one has some more ripples on top of it. There's really there's not, not much more about this. Um, and once you click it down, 
it is basically in here. And now you can actually see the exact uh, difference of the tool, the Tiras tool, what it did. Now where I had the shallow pool offset enabled, you can see there is this very, very shallow bit of water over here. This is basically the underwater Tiras. And over here where I disabled that, you have the water staying to the very uh, edge of the terrain and it's not gonna go over. So in this bit over here, this is the exact height that the animals require to sit in and have like a little splash and wash themselves and just enjoy. Um, and if you wanna get rid of the water, well, actually you just basically uh, use your uh, triangle or Y key and uh, click on the water and it's gone, but you have to be in the water menu in order to do this. Now you can put water also into different heights they will always go in the steps of one meter. As we did a one meter terrace over here, it makes sense that you only have one step. But if I get rid of this over here and we go all the way over here where I did a two meter offset, you will see that I have two different choices to put it in. So one is here and the other one is above here. So that is exactly two meters as well, makes sense because we use the two meter tool. Um, and this way you can create easily water volumes. And exactly this is happening. As soon as you put in the water, this is a water volume. To see how big it is, you can actually go over here to the select tool and then just click on it and boom, there you are. This is the one and only uh, water feature we have put down and we have a water area of 178 square meters with an average depth of 76 centimeters. Why are those two numbers important to you? Well, animals have requirements for swimmable area, which is then the surface area, the water area. So it's the 178 square meters for how much swimmable area they have. Some animals though have also a diving capability and they will need a certain depth of the pool. Some of them need two meters, some of them need three meters and some others even need four meters of depth. And then the average water depth will tell you if you reach this amount, so that will work. You can also check with the shoulder buttons again if there's anything connected to this bottom of water and uh, this will become important later on because uh, you will need a water treatment in order to make your water stay clean and then you also have a tab in which you can change the color which I think is beautiful um, because you can change between a lot of different things you can make it dirty water you can make it Everglade um, and this is very nice and this is also another feature that was added later because many things that you do in this game um, will be focused on making things either realistic or nice looking but this way to make this water look this way usually you need to get um, let itself get dirty which then is not good for your animals because your animals would get sick um, or get some diseases from that or in the worst case will eventually even die from drinking from this water but sometimes in real zoos the water is totally fine but because of the way the water has been done or the ground has been painted or the light is falling into this certain area of the zoo um, they do have water that looks brownish like that but it's totally fine to drink or you have animals that don't even go into the water and you have just this a little bit more muddy water and you want to have it look that way in your zoo too and so you can choose between these different things but if you're not like like me you want to have an exact color you can actually do this you can go in here and search for your very exact color also by the way you have the option of using a color picker too um, which is kind of cool you can really go in here and this time around and this is a bit of an odd one um, as soon as you go into the color picker all of a sudden your left mini stick becomes the one to navigate I mean it makes a lot more sense because it's more fun to navigate but um, the right one then will give you the saturation or the color thing as well and the left one is going to give you the control over where exactly you are so we can make it all the way like lava over here so like this and then we in this specific case you confirm it with the x key don't ask why sometimes you just have to accept it okay so we're going to confirm it and then you have got all this uh, orange looking weird water whatnot okay so once you're done you press b as always and then this uh, marks your terrain work oh my god that looks kind of weird so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go back to terrain and we're going to get rid of all the stuff we have done because, well, we need to do one more thing 
Um, and this one more thing is going to be shown to you in a bit um, by clicking one more the shoulder button and you are now greeted with the terrain stamp tool. Now this tool is another thing that made its debut with Planet Zoo and you may not know from the Planet Coaster days. So what does this tool do? Well, basically it does what it says. It is a terrain stamp and if you uh, look at these different um, geometries over there. You have either like a cube or you have a sphere. You've got a cylinder, you've got a pyramid, and you've got a ramp. You can use these different things to quickly add certain things to your area. And you can also um, obviously uh, change the different uh, locations where you want to put it. So, for example, if you say the cube, and I'm just going to click over here, you can see that I'm easily clicking some stamps in here. So that is, that is very odd. But um, if you want to make uh, sure that this thing goes up, you can again hold down the X key. And then you can also bring it all the way up or bring it all the way down. And if you go here from subtract to add terrain, you can see all of a sudden uh, the, the thing changes. And if we want to say, let's close off the entire thing, we can say, okay, let's change the height and the width of this thing. Make it like super big. And then we're going to move it into this position and move it slightly down until we are matching our ground level somewhat like this. And then boom, everything is closed off almost. Okay, so very simple stuff. However, there is one more thing I need to show you. Um, you can also go back into the train, go back to these things. And you can see I, I had a bit of a struggle, you know, to move it there. So how would it be if we have a bit more of a precise control? We do have a precise control in this game. And this is the advanced move tool. Look at that. This is bringing up a little gizmo. So if you've ever been playing a 3D thing or have been editing 3D, whether it's Blender or whatever, SketchUp or uh, I don't know, uh, so many tools that you can have, uh, even just some other CAD tools. Um, this thing is going to help you move this thing a lot more precise along the different axes. And in this tool, you can easily switch between the axes with your shoulder buttons. As you can see, click, 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 click. Very, very nice. You can go through these different ones. And there is a new option that we got on the computer version just a year ago. Um, it now has a double edge select, so to say. You can select two axes at the same time. Um, if you check the right hand side now of your screen, you can see I am going through the different three single axes. So X, Y and Z. So while X and uh, Z are the lower ground ones, Y defines the height. Um, and you can also have them combined. A X and Y will always move it along these two axes, as you can see over here. Nice. And then you've got also Y and Z, which is going to move it alongside these two axes, so like almost like a 2D view from the side, if you will. So if you're once you're happy, for example, with the positioning of your piece um, from the X axis, you can then go on and just move it on the other. And the same goes, obviously, when you're happy with your height, you can just move it alongside the ground a lot more nice. But I'm not, I'm not happy with the height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out, first of all, and I'm going to adjust the height now so that it really, really fits perfectly fine in here. There you go. And now I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just, I'm just very happy. And now I can move it on the ground until I find these little holes that we still left. And then I'm just going to click and then I'm done. Okay. So very simple. This way you can do it. However, just to make things look as they looked before, we are going to quickly use the flatten to foundation tool and we're going to make this size all the way up. And then we go all the way up with the intensity. And just to showcase this to you, I'm going to use this time around the selected. And I'm going to go and select, uh, first of all, I'm going to select the long grass. And then I'm going to go back here and I use the selected. And now when I do this, whoops, did I not select the, uh, this is so odd. Why does it, is this another bug I just encountered over here? So uh, let's see if it. Okay, well, that should not, <laughs> this should not happen. Actually, it should now paint the uh, grass. Well, there it does it on the auto paint. Um, but normally, if you do go here and you, for example, let's say uh, now we are choosing, let's choose sand for a second. And now we go back in the terrain editor and we say now flatten. Usually this, as soon as I go to use selected, should 
paint everything in sand, but it doesn't do it. it. It does it in soil for whatever reason. Okay, never mind. We're going to just paint over it real quick so everything is fine. And we go on with the next chapter. Now, you've learned already so much, guys. Trust me, there is so much you've learned right now without even noticing. But now we are cracking the biggest issue of this game. We're cracking the nut of Planet Zoo or of any Planet game. And that is, my friends, the pathing. You can see we have already quite a couple of path things over here and um, I decided to leave them in to show you right away that there's a lot possible. So you can see there's a plaza over here, there's a huge plaza over here, there are some small little pathways over there, there are some odd little looking path over here, there is a dedicated staff path to the back, there is a wonderful ramp without a staircase and, and very crazy things over here and there is this viewing platform which is very nicely raised over here above the barrier actually look at that so there's a lot possible you know there's a lot possible with the path tool so what we're going to do we're going to show you exactly how you do this now it, it won't come as a surprise that you click on the path menu first of all and then this is the menu you're greeted with and this menu is very important to you when you build because in, in this thing you can go through the different texture options. They don't really do anything apart from changing the texture. And I may just add that every path also comes with a curb and a railing. I'm going to quickly explain to you what that is. Now, a curb is this little bit down here that you can... Wait, I'm just going to go out here. So this over here is the curb, this ugly little weird thing to the right or left side, so like the boundary of your path, which you can get rid of on the um, ground level, as you can see over here. This is one where I selected to get rid of it, and this is the one I selected to have it. But on raised paths, you will also have, and this is where I'm going to go all the way up, you will have a railing. So you can see this white thing with the roundish ornaments on it that kind of look like a whirlpool. Um, this is the curb, and the metal rig on top of it, which is automatically generated, is derailing and both of these things you can actually in the settings you can turn them on and off however unfortunately and this is something we as players wish from the early days already of planet uh, coaster we would love to be able to switch between the different styles as we wish but unfortunately every of the every and single style is tucked to a different texture so for example if I do now go into the settings and I'm not going to go through all the settings as we will feature them along the play as you can tell um, you will be able to uh, basically turn on the railing or the curbs and I'm gonna do the curb on ground path now on on and I'm also going to do the railing on ground path on so you can see that so you already can tell that something on screen happens now if I place it down you can see there is something happening now if I go back and I'm gonna change over here the texture I'm gonna do exactly the same again and I'm gonna do the same again I'm gonna say that, that that is enough for the moment you can see we've got five different elements and we've got five different combinations of uh, ground texture, curbing, and the railing. Now, if you want to change that and things afterwards, well, that is no big deal at all. You just click back into the path menu and you go back into the settings and then you're like, yeah, you know what? Railing railing on ground path was really not the, the, the best idea. So you can get rid of it. Or you can actually go also and get rid of the curb. And so if you want to get rid of the curb, for example, um, I'm going to do this over here. You still maintain the railing, as you can tell. Um, however, you do not, and this is, uh, this is kind of funny too, um, you do not get rid of the railing. So that's kind of cool. But if you want to get rid of both, for example, to railing on ground path off as well, you can just go over it, click again, and then you basically override your styling from before, but the path you've built stays exactly the same. Now, we are getting to the very most important tool of the entire console version that the computer version doesn't have. And I do mean that with all the seriousness in here. It's not a joke, I'm not exaggerating. Welcome the dial menu. My friends, this is the most important option you have in this game. By holding down your Y key or your um, triangle on, uh, 
on the PlayStation controller, you'll be bringing up this dial menu. Now, we didn't use this so far because um, I wanted to get you the, the foundation laid down first of all. But this is the one you will use from now on. Every single thing you do in the game, you will do this. And don't worry, these five options you see on screen right now will always change according to your context. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So if we, for example, now go into terrain editing, you can see, oh my god, look at that, we've got different options. Now we've got smooth, pull, push, flatten to surface. All these options you otherwise would need to go through here and blah, blah, blah. You have them always available by just doing this. Now, going back to the path options, you will always have certain things over here. And we are going to get to them. Now, let's quickly delete the path. You can easily delete the path by pressing Y. Um, this is very simple. And now, as I do put down the path, as you can see over here, I have some options available to me. So first of all, I can quickly switch between angle snap. So what does the angle snap do? Well, it's very easy to understand. Once you snap to the angle, you can see I'm not completely freely rotating, but there's like a little bit of a, um, yeah, it, it's kind of a little bit of a barrier that keeps me from moving freely, you know? Um, and if I do increase the angle snap, then you can see the step is becoming bigger and bigger. Now, this is very much important. If you want to build something very geometric, uh, geometry looking, you can easily do this, you know? Look at that. It's, it's very simple to create, like, for example, a um, perfect circle with that. Just like that, you create like a perfect circle. Look, this is, this is very simple, okay? Very simple. This is like a perfect circle. And if you want to go back now, you can just do the exact same because the step will always be 30 degrees. And this is why you will automatically create the perfect. Look, this is a perfect pill kind of design from above. You will not be able to do this without the angle snap because whenever you do with a free mode will necessarily look weird. Now, that, that is kind of cool looking, doesn't it? Now, there are now a couple of options we can say. We can say, hey, you know, I, I built this path, but I want to go on from over here and build like a, big, a bigger plaza. Well, there is this option, select the grid. Now, what does this tool do is very simple. And you hear that from my talks, a lot of these things are simple. Once you get it, it's super easy to understand. Now, you are greeted now in this mode with your cursor in the middle and you just hover over a path and then you have our grid appear. Now, the grid is something very important for the game in general. The grid marks the base game grid, which is um, defined by the angles um, on these two axes that we already got to know with the gizmo tool. And on the grid, you can just click and now you can just build path elements exactly on these grid, well, tiles, I should say, and the game will automatically put them down. There's also an option if you go to your right menu again and you switch down and you go down here to the square edges, you just say turn on, then you can see it switches from these roundish edges. And now if I do put them in here, you can see there's like a round edge. But if I go and say a square edge and move over to the other side, it's going to create like a square corner plaza. As you can tell over here, I chose this from for this plaza. I made this like a square edge. But once you do this somewhere else, for example, like over here, here, you're going to make this like a roundish one. So if you want to build something roundish like I did over there with the viewing edge, you basically use the grid and just make everything around. So it's very simple. If you want to recreate this real quick, you want to go in here and now for this sake, let's use a different type of path. You just need to put down a path and then you can already go in here and say, yeah, select the grid, hover over and it's going to create the grid, make sure square edges are disabled. And now you just fill in four tiles and you've got your perfect round piece. But you're wondering now maybe, how the hell did you get this in midair then? Because that's all on the ground. How the hell are we going to build some stairs? Well, let me show you. So once you're in path and you just put down a path, for example, we start over here. How do I get up? Now you will see to the bottom layer over here, you can now hold down the X button and just slide up your left mini stick. Look, boom, there you go. And if you slide the left mini stick or flick it up once more, boom, you even have a staircase. Now, you have to understand that with the default mode of building slopes, you have two different uh, incline levels. The first one being this one, which is going to be the first flick, is going to bring up the normal slope. And once you press, you're going to build this slope easily like this. You may have noticed I made like a little 
turn in here. How is that even possible? Now, first of all, let's undo this option. Remember, we have an undo option. Hold down your X key and then use the arrow key to the left. It's going to undo your last movement. Or you can redo this. Oh, I love it. It's so satisfying. Um, but yeah, it's undone. And you want to do that again. Now we go back to path and automatically connect over here. By the way, if you don't want to have this automatic path connecting, you can just move away and um, with the detail key on the left hand side, you can see this is like that. I'm not sure how the key is specifically named, but it's the one with the two squares joining each other here on Xbox. So if you click that one, it's going to allow you to push the path very much in here without it automatically magnetically connecting to the existing path. Put it again, you can see it starts doing the same again. So that is very helpful if you want to start like a new part over here, very pre precise, and you don't want it to be connected. But you know, in my case, I want to have it connected. So in we go to the settings again, and there's one setting that is called the curved slopes. Sometimes it's actually reachable, as you can see from the dial menu, and boom, we're gonna turn it off over here. And now you will see, once I click, and I'm gonna build up again, for example once, um, I will not be able to go left or right. Whatever I do with the mini stick, and I'm gonna do this aggressively, so you hear that on the microphone that I'm flicking like a madman, nothing happens. This is good if you wanna build something very, very straight. Also, if you want to build one higher, you just hold down X again and you flick it all up and you have got a staircase. And you can also just go down again and do the exact same thing again. Um, very important to notice is as soon as you go back to a level over here, this is level, um, you will have the option to go left and right again, right away. So the um, curved slopes is only for curved slopes, just like the name says. So that is pretty simple. Now you can also uh, just undo your pathing by holding down uh, the Y key and then it will delete the last path you've done and once you want to continue you just hover over with your cursor until this one over here appears. Now um, let's quickly do something else. We want to have this entire thing raised, okay? So what we're going to do, we go back to path and again, make sure that they are not joining and you want to raise this bit over here now. That is the easiest thing to do. You can just hold down X and then you will see a small green arrow is going to appear over your path and automatically there is a grid and a railing appearing. This is because you switched the mode from being on the ground to being in the midair. So in this second, the settings for, and I'm just going to switch over to the settings real quick, we have a setting that is for ground, but also for raised areas. So if we say, for example, we want to have the railing on elevated on, they will be there. If I turn them off and I do this again, you can see the railing is gone. And some of you may already scream and shout at the screen that you want to get rid of the curb as well. But I have to say sorry, you will not be able to do that because unfortunately um, this will always stay. However, this is the easiest way to go up and down. And now you can just uh, release your X key and it's going to be staying on this height. So once I go over here and it is, I have disabled the auto joining, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this even higher. Let's say like so. I'm going to move it slightly over here, press, and now you can see we are building in a little area up in the air. And you can see there's not even a support down here because the supports are turned off. No, actually they're not. So actually I think if I build one more, their support should basically... Where's the support? I think we're too low for a support. That is maybe why. Um, usually a support should basically be appearing right now, but okay. Well, we have floating path. That's fine. Now... As you can tell, if I do um, move around, it is everything the same as you know it from ground level. And you can even select the grid if you want to over here. And this is exactly the way how I build... Why do you say obstructed? Wait, wait a sec. I'm just going to go over here again and select the grid. There you go. I'm really not sure why it says obstructed right now. Uh, it should work. Hello? This is a bit odd. Let me just... I promise I, I just did this a couple of minutes ago before I started the tutorial. Let's move this a little bit higher up and do the same thing over here again. Sometimes the game just seems to be... Okay. I'm not even sure what exactly is happening right now. Um, because usually you are just going to build on this grid just as you did but something seems to be odd over here. Um, so don't mind. 
this is um this seems to be like a little bug that is going to be ironed out for the release. Again, I have a list with a couple of issues that the game still has and will be ironed out by the release. But unfortunately, you know, I can't have them all knowing by heart next to me. So this is surely going to be fixed and you will be able to build this. But I'm going to show you, you know what? We we are here in a laid back uh, tutorial in, in which I promise to show you everything. We can overcome this issue real quick. We can just bring it up and, you know, we built this circular thing our, on our own. We are just building this right now and then... We are making sure that the angle snap is aligned and then you flick this around. You know, we're just going to go and show you the trick right away. Put it on 90 degrees and then you build this like so. And there you go. Boom, you build it. Now, the logic applies. It's basically the same logic as with the... Um, with the grid tool because whenever you build from only 90 degrees well the game only has one option to create a plaza because there is you have the perfect 90 degree angle so i'm gonna show you right away over here again so um this way you just have to connect that first of all and then do the same over here again and now you will also be able to connect these two together let's just zoom around hello should be yeah there you go as you can see if if I if I do hover over it should be able to, yeah. And then it's, then it's all perfectly created. There you go. You can you can just do that. There's like a little nubsy in the middle left, but you can get rid of this as well. Now you don't need this. You can just get rid of it. And um, this is already how you have mastered the pathing. But this wouldn't be the perfect tutorial for everything. There are two more little things I need to show you. Because you will maybe notice that some of the paths over here look quite organic, don't they? Like, how is this plaza even possible over here with all these little lovely things? Well, there is another trick I need to show you. So, see this edge over here looks a little bit odd, right? What we would love, would love that this is leveled out. Just imagine that we could have like a nice little curve that just levels out these two corners and also stays over here the way it is because this one over here could be like a little shop front, right? With the perfect pill format. But over here, it would be so nice if that is leveled out. Well, I have good news. We can do that with a little bug that is in the game since the very beginning of Planet Coaster. And the bug is um, has never been patched out because Frontier just accepted that this is a feature now. So how it's working is super easy. You just find exactly the edge that you want to smooth out. So in our case, we want to smooth out this edge in there and we want to smooth out this edge. And you can see down the path is offering me to build a joint over here. And we are actually doing exactly this. We are building the joint over in the middle. It's very important. As soon as this happens, it's not going to work anymore because you can see we are not in the middle of our edge. We are actually to the right of it. Now, also the same applies to the left. You want to be in the middle. And you just build this, but now it's important, don't build again. What you want to do now is you delete the piece right away by pressing your Y key. And look at that, what happened? It's smoothed out. It is smoothed out. So just to show you that this is a bug and not a feature, if I undo what we've just done, it's, it's back here. You can see it's not smoothed out anymore. So undo will remove it, but as soon as I do that again, it's again smoothed out. And the same works on the other side. You just select this area and click it again. And you can you can also achieve different um, levels of roundiness. Is, is that even a word, roundiness? So the more you are in the center, the more gentle it's gonna be. So for example, over here, so you can see there is the perfect connection. And if I go a little bit further here to the inside, let's showcase this to you. There you go. Oops, that was one. That, that was my mistake now. I'm just gonna, gonna go here and delete it. Oops, delete it now. You can see the leveling is a lot more subtle than it was before. Now I can do that again. You know, I can find the edge again, delete it, and it's a bit more heavy. The same goes over here. I can do that again. And again, as long as it takes to find the perfect smoothing for me. Um, so that is a path smoothing technique that also works on raised path and every other path as well. So there's really not that big deal. Um, you can do this uh, many, many times until you find the perfect plaza. I mean, look at how that looks. Looks like a, like, like a bottle opener. Oh, this thing is called. <laughs> you can flick open the bottle. That's a good point. I need to drink something. And as this is a full on tutorial, I'm not going to cut this or anything. I'm going to drink this while I'm going to do a little segue into the next topic, which is going to be the barrier control. Mm. Ah, good water. Now, 
With the bottle opener, we're opening up the next topic. What a segue. Um, and this is the barrier seg uh, segment, which is, fortunately enough, a super simple one. This is because the game itself is just super simple. Uh, barriers are very much super important to the game, and you can use them in different ways. You can either use them as a well, fully intended barrier, or you can use them to create like walls, for example, over here. We're going to start with the wall first because that is um, the one without function. And then we go over to our habitats I have already pre-prepared for you guys over here to showcase what is possible. Now, let's first of all go to the barrier menu and hit A and see what we are greeted with. Now, this is our menu and we only have three tabs. We've got the fence tab, we've got the habitat gate tab, and we've got some settings. This time around, um, the settings are super simple. We have the highlight hidden path nearby. Um, this comes in handy once you're using the null path option in this game. There is an option where you can make like natural path and sometimes you don't see them. But as you can see over here, you can't put barriers over a path. And this is why it comes in handy to highlight where the path is. Um, but it only, for me, it's set on nearby because, you you know, when there is like a path all the way there in the back, you know, in, by the hills, you don't need to see that, okay? It doesn't matter. The camera is set to follow, but you can also follow and center. Um, so whenever you click, it's centering again. I hate that, but, you know, you do you, whatever you want. Um, and rotate is even worse because then it's not only centering it, but it's always rotating it. Well, and the game decides which rotation it does. And then you have also free, which um, will basically not change the camera at all. Um, I do say, I don't even know what I like more, follow or free. Sometimes I feel like free is better, but then again, follow helps you to be a bit more quicker when you build. So I'll keep that to follow for the tutorial because that's the default. And then you can see the height lab uh, labels of your um, fence you're building down. And I'm going to keep them to the rain level uh, relative because then you can see always how high the barrier is at a certain point of the fence now uh, of the terrain and i'm going to show you why that is important because if we have this um fence piece over here and we're going to start with the concrete then you can basically see as soon as i move over here with the terrain it always stays two meter high however if i would be to change the setting and i'm going to say i'm going to have this uh on the sea level relative, and I'm going to go back to this, you can see it's telling me 32.6 meters, and down here is only, I don't know, 27.4, but this doesn't tell me how high the fence is for an animal that technically could jump over it, because you will always get an idea from the, um, uh, from the uh, Zoopedia, and the Zoopedia is going to tell you how high animals can jump. So once they say it three meters, you know, okay, your fence needs to be at least three meters so they can't jump over. But if you have sea level relative, you can't tell if it's enough or not because the terrain below it has changed. Now, what you can see with the concrete, some of the fences in here will come with the option of a flexi color option. And so you can just go into the color menu again and just pick the color you want. So, oops, uh, I want to go in here. And then you can just say, you know what, we're just going to build a red one over here. Confirm that again and now we're building a red concrete wall. Now, how do we build this? Well, this is the magic. So you can also choose for straight or curved sections. I'm going to show you the difference as the first thing. Now, first of all, to build, you just click and then you drag your cursor in the direction where you want to have the fence and it does appear. Uh, once you click again, the game will follow exactly and you just build the fence like that. Uh, it goes a little bit like the pathing and you delete them the same way around. You just hit Y on the last bit you placed. So super simple. But if you do, for example, take curved sections, the first one uh, has been set and now you can see once I move it, it starts creating a curved section. Look at that. This is this is super, super, super easy. Um, that is that is really easy. And what you also can do is relatively simply um, select all the things you've put down. Now, let me just click down a couple more so you can see that. So we've got now built five elements. And it's going to be like if you want to select everything and when you just need to hover over all of them and select them and ah, it just doesn't really feel good. But if you click your right mini stick you will have selected all of them at once. 
This is very good because you can adjust the height. Now you can see it is only 1.8 meters at some point and 2 meters over here. But let's say our fence has to be 3 meters high at every point to ensure that our animals cannot jump over it. Here again we have the X key. Keep it pushed and then you just move your left mini stick up. And you can say, okay, we, th we set 3 meters. So we can just set it down to, yeah, that's fine. And then just release the uh, X key again and boom, you just increase the height of your fence. Super easy. Now, what again if you want to build a gate in here? Well, you switch into the gate tab and you just move your gate towards the fence you build or the barrier you build and it automatically creates the gate. Wherever you see the path is the front, okay? Whatever is on the opposite side is the habitat. Now, in this specific case over here, the lower part of the screen is the outside where the staff members can access and the upper part would be where our habitat sits. So if I do go to the other side and flick it over, you can see it just flicked over and this would then put the habitat in the other side. We've got a couple of variants um, from the fences, but they don't really do anything apart from looking different. So uh, if we were to change it, you can see we've got a wooden one, we've got a glass one, we've got a small one, we've got a small wooden one, and we've got a guest gate. The guest gate is um, for walkthrough exhibits. So for example, if you build an area with like, uh, yeah, your pea folds or so, like animals or flamingos that usually go together with guests, you can also ring-tailed lemurs, for example, you can just put in a guest gate and this is where the guest can go in, but the animals can't go out. Um, then we have our wonderful viewing dome. This is a entrance that needs to be put to your barrier once you want to put down some of these lovely little viewing domes that allow to see people uh, see animals up close from being in the dome. Uh, very simple, you just place these domes inside of your habitat and then you put this gate outside of it and then automatically connect them to the gate. People will go in here and appear inside of them. It's the same as with the restaurant and don't worry, we will talk about the restaurant later on in the tutorial. Now, next is the track airlock. Um, this actually is the same as the guest gate, only that this is for the rides and we have actually a couple of styles for this one. I honestly don't know, and this is again one of these logic things that Frontier loves to do, why we have three different variants of a track airlock but only one variant of a guest lock. Like, why can't we have this one over here as a guest lock? I just don't get it, but hey. Who am I to judge, okay? Now, um, I don't want to go to everything uh, through everything a little bit over here because honestly, this is exactly what I meant early on. It doesn't help if you do that. So what we are going to do, my friends, we are just going to delete this one over here and we rebuild this wonderful fence for you guys. So let me just first of all uh, quickly check, uh, check this one. Um, and multi-select this because holding down A will bring up the multi-select and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, woo! Oops, let me, hello, I want to go in here and I want to edit the barrier and now I want to edit the barrier and multi-select all of them and so once, once you've multi-select everything and you're just in the middle of it and you press Y, it's gone. Simple as that, okay? Simple as that. But as I promised, we are going to do this. I'm just going to select this fence over here and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go all the way down to edit the barrier. And I can now multi-select everything or I can just, you know, whenever I want to, select all of them by pressing down the right uh, mini stick, just as I said earlier, which I'm going to do because I'm lazy and I don't want to do this. And just click Y. Boom. The fence is gone. So is the habitat. Okay. Now, as promised, we are quickly going to rebuild this and then we are almost already um, going into the next part of this tutorial with the facilities and after the facilities we will have a little quick building first steps before we then merge over to the second part of the tutorial which is all about building and all about details. Now, um, we are going to put the fence back in here so this is where we go to barriers and we're going to go for gates and we are going to choose the, let's say the glass gate and now as you can tell, dang it, it's not the right way around, we are just going to, oops, uh, Come on, where is the gate? There you go. Um, we want to rotate this and you can do this on the X key and then this menu appears and you just rotate this thing around until you're happy with the rotation and you can also go up and down with uh, the, this, the height of the fence. In my case, let's, whoa, whoa, this is a little bit too much, go a little bit like so and now this is somewhat of the positioning I had. Let me just 
rotate this back into its position. Yeah, that, that is fine. We don't mind too much about the height and place it down. Okay, cool. Like this is, we, we did it, okay? We did it. Now let's select this entire thing and we're gonna say again, select all of them because I want to quickly change the style um, because we actually want to have, first of all, can I have all of them? And I'm gonna change the style into, we had the steel mesh was the one we had over here. Let's select this one. Also steel mesh is recolorable if you want to. And um, now this is changed into steel mesh. The steel mesh comes with a very cool thing. And this is down here, the climb proof. Uh, why is climb proof important? Well, some animals in this game can actually climb. So will be the Formosan black bear, which is the animal that goes into this very habitat. And this habitat needs to be proven. Um, and so they can't escape. You can either say it's none, which is exactly the state we're in right now, or it is left, which is going to be on this side of it. And as you can tell from this view, that would be pretty stupid because that will prevent our staff member from climbing in, but not the animal from climbing out. So that is stupid. Or we do right, then it's the right side. But as we have not built everything, sometimes it may be confusing and even though it is correct for us now, it may be incorrect on the other side. So we are going to say both for our case, okay? Now we've set this, we want to continue building in here. So what we're gonna select is, we're going to say here, okay, plus, and then from over here, we're just going to build the next fence. And therefore, we're just going to say, you know what, um, I'm gonna build, uh, I'm gonna deselect this and I'm gonna just select this one to build. So just click on the fence and then you are good to go. I want to go in curved selections. There you go. This is nice. And now I want to also have the climb proof on both sides enabled again. Lovely. Now you can see this is where the habitat was and you can also see we have angle snap enabled. Um, and oops, I deleted something. I was That was not, not my intention. Um, let me just go back down and keep on building. There you go. Let's add. Ah. Not select. I wanna. I wanna start from over here. Let me build. Okay. So now we've got built this, and you can also see this is now angle snapped on zero. Okay. This is why it felt so weird. Okay. Never mind. Um. We have this one, and you can also increase the length if you want to, which I want to. I'm gonna go to ten meters, and from now on over here, we're just going to place down the barriers. It's really simple as that. I honestly, there's really not that much to say, which is a good thing. Um, because honestly, it would be a bit odd if not. Now, you can see I did something over here and this is why I'm gonna go right over here and increase the length a little so that we find the right spot. Let me just place it here. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Just build the habitat from over here further. There you go. This is uh, somehow where I was. And then we just go all the way around. You can see sometimes with the path, as closer as you get, sometimes it has a bit of an issue because then it's too close and you can't be placing it. But I want to go over here anyways. And this is a little too long and so I need to go back a little, um, which I'm going to do. Decrease the length over here and just place it. Okay, I think we are done, are we? No, that looks good. That looks exactly as it was before, right? Well, not quite, because if we click on the habitat itself, you can see it's incomplete. Why is that incomplete? I mean, we had something in here, right? I, it was complete. You've seen that there was an animal in. Well, it is incomplete because no habitat is complete as long as there is no full barrier around and we need a barrier in here. So if we were to go on with the barrier like we just did, this wouldn't look the same way as I had it because I literally didn't have anything in here, did I? Well, this is where the null barrier comes in. Now, the null barrier is a variant of a barrier that does exactly the same as the game does with all the other fences. However, it is just invisible. This is for the people who want to build very nice natural barriers, which is exactly what I want to build over here. So let's just quickly put these things in here. And it doesn't really matter what exactly you are putting them down for. You just need to ensure that you place them in a spot where your animals would not get. And as you can see, I lowered this down specifically to ensure that the animals cannot escape over here. And there will be a couple of things here to the edges, so a bit of a fence I built myself, a custom fence, and put them down. Okay, before we talk about the, uh, you know, the build itself and um, the facilities, I need to quickly show you what this is over here. Why is this such an odd 
fence over here. Well, let me first of all show how you did uh, how I did this. So first of all, we are going to quickly um, edit the barrier, and we are going to get rid of this one, of this one, and of this one. Okay, so now um, I did a bit of terrain work. You, as you know now how to do terrain work, you will know how exactly I did the pit over here. Not really too much of a problem. I just, you know, pushed down the terrain and then I said level it and we had this little hole because I wanted to put water in here. Now, well, let's just do that, right? Let's put water back in. Let's go to water. Uh, where's the water tab over here? There you go. Let's choose the calm water, go to the car. Oh, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working though? Well, I can tell you why, because there's a path down here. You cannot put water above path because people would then be to go into the water. That would cause the game to crash, but I mean, eventually you can't even do this. It's literally impossible. But we want to have water on this side and we want to have people on the other side watching the animals, right? Well, we need to place a barrier in between because this is the beauty of the game. You can make water be inside of barriers. Let me just quickly give you a bit of a, a bit of a tutorial on that. So as soon as you have a barrier, uh, and let's say we're gonna go with the glass already over here, and you just build a fully contained, well, it doesn't matter what format it is, but this is now a full tank, so to say, okay? And if we now go to terrain, and we go all the way to water again, you can see all of a sudden, you have the valid option in here. You click and there's water in, look. So this is because these barriers act like barriers for water too. You need to have a certain height of your barrier. So just to showcase this to you, go to barriers. And if we select this one and we say we select all the barriers and we were to just increase the height dramatically, for example, over here, and we go back to terrain and we go all the way back to water, you can see I can even put water in, whoops, uh, a lot higher. Whoops, come on, just put it in. There you can see, you can just go a lot higher. Um, you can always go like up to two meters left of the barrier. And as soon as you're happy with this, you can just actually uh, click the barrier and then again, uh, make sure that you select one, select all of them, and then you can also lower the barrier back down. Just not too low, but very close to the edge of the water. And then you almost have like an infinity pool. Look, <coughs> this is how easy it can go. And also sorry for coughing. Anyways. We're just gonna get rid of it, um, and I'm gonna showcase how this is done properly in action. Because, now, if we were to build this over here, let me just quickly check this, and then it does say incomplete again, obviously, and we go to edit the barrier, and now we want to build with the glass panel over here. So let's click the glass panel. I'm not sure why the game doesn't allow the glass panel from beginning. And I'm gonna put this down over here, and I need to quickly switch over to the, whoops, where is the option? There you go. I'm gonna go to the curved sections. There you go. And I'm gonna select this one over here. And now, as you can see, the game automatically allows me to go down. I need to be a bit more careful. Sometimes I need to find the right spot to find it and to go down. Uh, I did a couple of things. Maybe I need to increase the length a little to find the better ground where to, where to just put it down. Let's see if there's any possible outcome? Oh, well, it's not. Sometimes, okay, we may actually go and say, first of all, let's go with the straight section. Okay, further back in here, it does work, and this is because of the terrain editing. Um, if I were to smooth out the terrain a little more, and you know what, I'm just gonna show you. Let's take that time, I'm gonna show you. So this terrain over here is the issue, because it is a bit of a problem. Um, we're going to just go to the smooth tool, and we most likely decrease the size dramatically. And then we just smooth this out like a little baby's bud. There you go. That looks a lot nicer. And then we go back to the barrier over here. Whoops, keep editing the barrier. There we go. Go all the way, edit the barrier. And now let's click there again to continue building. And as you can see, now I can place the barrier also in this spot. I'm gonna make the length, uh, oops, a lot shorter like this. So there you go. And now what I want to have is like a curved section again, and I'm gonna increase the length a lot because I want to keep this uh, as I had it, a little like so. And then I'm gonna automatically search for this thing. There you go. And we have already done it. We've got our underwater viewing done again. And now if we were to go to terrain and we switch over to the water tab, you'll see 
that I'm able to put the border back in and automatically it's held over on this side. And as I've promised, if we were to go now to edit the barrier over here and we're selecting just that inner piece and we say we lower it down, you can actually lower this down quite a bit as you can tell. So make it a lot lower. You can even go further low. There you go. This might actually be even too low because in here um, the animals could jump out. But you can always just click on as well, which I find also super cool. Um, and you can easily switch a couple of things. So for example, if you say, hey, but I'm like in a swampy area and I want to make this thing like a fake, fake lock v look kind of thing, you know, you're just going to select the piece and then you go to log and it automatically creates the barrier out of logs. Um, and the the cool bit about this is you can not only keep it as this, you can even put a window in. Look at that. Just put a glass window in over here or even a one-way glass in. Uh, you know, one-way glass always means that the animals can't, well, actually I have to change the direction. There you go. Now I put a one-way glass uh, in as well. From the outside, it doesn't seem like anything different, but if I turn around, you can see it. the glass itself is like a little bit made dark so that the animals are not distracted from people. They can't see. It's like these these type of things you always see like also, um, uh, you know, in, in movies or so when they're sitting inside a room and, and talking to someone and someone else is standing in a room next to it and listening to them uh, via this kind of mirror. Anyways, but this is a way to beautify your areas. For those of you who know the computer version, they know we also had an option to uh, change a lot of things about this specific glass. Um, however, in the console version, this is not possible. So uh, for those of you who know it and you wanted it, this is always going to be the window and you're not able to adjust the height or the size of the window itself, which is a bit of a, you know, it's it's kind of a little thing. Um, I understand why, because this is a super finicky setting, um, but just so you know, in case you were looking for it, it's not in. But that shall not take away from the, from the awesomeness that this area is. And again, as always, Always, if you're very unhappy with the changes you did, you can just spam the redo undo key. You know, you can even redo undo the terrain editing. I don't know. And then you go all the way back to what you had before. And this is basically how it works, you know, very simple. And you can also undo things, redo things, you know, until you're happy with what you've done. I'm going to keep it in the state we had it over here because that's just how it is. Now, lovely bit, guys, lovely bit. We are making our way through this tutorial, and you are already, you are already almost 50% there to become a master of Planet Zoo on console. Now, the next bit we are talking about are the facilities. You can see I already put a couple of facilities down just to show them to you, and we're going to talk about them a bit more in detail. Now, there are utilities. This is the one we start with. And this is, for example, over here, this is a wonderful, wonderful solar panel. And the solar panel provides the area with energy. In order to see that, if we click on this one, this solar panel um, provides the area with energy. And you can see it's already not in the bestest of conditions anymore. We would need to have a mechanic to fix this soon. But if you want to do something with it, there is obviously the radial menu available to you right away. And you could just do a couple of things. You can, for example, say, ah, you know what, I'm not happy about the positioning. Let's move it real quick, okay? And then you will be getting a option to move it right away, or you just can rotate it if you want to, just move it to another position if you want to. And if you're like, hey, I didn't want to do that, let's just don't do it. You can just, you know, click B and you're out of it. However, you can also check the heat map, therefore you uh, hold down the detail key and Y at the same time, and automatically the game will give you the correct heat map. And in our case, this is the power heat map. Now you can tell everything over here is perfectly powered. Everything is in. The entrance building itself comes with the power as well. So this is why we already have quite some. And the different energy sources that we have in the game. And let me just show them to you in the facility tab. You just go all the way to facilities. Then press B until you are in the main menu. And then you go down over here to the utilities. And then you can see if we press A, we've got three options for um, energy, which is the solar panel the transformer or the wind turbine. And all of those three have different radius. The solar panel has the least big or like the smallest radius. The wind turbine has like a mediocre one and the transformer has the biggest one. However, the transformer has the biggest negative influence to your guest, while the solar panel barely has any influence to your guest, negative influence, I shall say. Um, however, 
we also need to talk about those two. We have two water treatment options and we are going to put down both now just to showcase what they can do. So you just select them as you would do with every single building and then you rotate this until you are facing the right way to your path. If, for example, what for me personally this always annoys me, you don't want to have the heat map while you're building, you want to place down your building, you just do the exact same thing. You hold down your detail key and press Y and then you should actually have, no, there you go, then you don't have any of the heat maps available and you can actually see where you place things, okay? And now in this case, I want to place it down here and then I'm going to press B once to go back in the menu. However, one thing has changed now and if you quickly look to the top right, there is a orange kind of little flag and this tells you you are editing group number 55 and this is not a tip that is related to the facilities itself this is a tip that is related to the game itself the game while building acts in groups now the group is something very important because you will either build inside of a group or not and the group will become one editable group that you can manipulate at once or at least just go in and just do the things inside of the group so it's kind of an organizer for your game because if i were to pick the water temperature regulator now well what it does obviously this is the treatment which keeps the water clean and this is setting the temperature of your water you will see automatically i'm on the exact same grid as i was before with my wonderful friend the treatment so i can just place it next to it Boom. If I go out of it and back in the menu, you can see I could now place something else. But if I were to say, you know, I, I don't want to put it next to it. I want to put it, let's say, here in between in that corner. You can just press the right mini stick and then you're out of the group. You press B. And if you now go to facilities and you were to place down the wind turbine, you can see you create your very own grid. And you can even see that by the blue highlight of the other facilities. And your own very piece is highlighted in yellow which is why you are on your own right now and if i were to place it over here this is another group so i'm gonna hit b until i'm out of every menu and now if i hover over these things you can see if i click on it then you will see this and if i go all the way down and say select the group which is over here you will see that both of the facilities are grouped under group number 55 and it shows me that in this group we have the facilities water temperature regulator one and the water treatment one. If I were to do the same with my buildings over here, this is the staff room, but I'm going to go all the way down and going to say show me the group, you will see oh my god I've got four of them even in here and this is the staff room, the animal trade center, the keeper hut and another keeper hut. Okay, but a perfect segue, obviously. Uh, totally wanted to do that. Also, let me just get rid of this thing real quick. Again, the, uh, the dial menu will give you quick access to that. Um, these are the staff facilities that we have. Again, if we are in facilities and we were to go back to showcase some of the sub menus, there is a menu for the staff facilities. And you have a couple of staff facilities, which are, and I'm just going to quickly go through of them, the Animal Trade Center, which is the one we have over here. This needs to be placed down before you can do anything with your animals. Otherwise, you will have no access to the animal market. Then we have a keeper hut, large and small, which is the kitchen in which uh, the keepers can prepare food for your animals. We have the quarantine and large and small, even though the smallest quarantine is still rather big, which is where animals that have a disease to the, who need to be isolated from other ones get into quarantine. And then we have the research center in large and small, in which um, different things about animals, for example, different diseases and treatments can be researched. However, in the small center, there's only one vet at a time. And in the big one, I think it's three vets at a time who can research certain things. Then we have the staff room, large and small, which is um, a room for your staff members to recreate and to basically you can set different traits and then they have different um, things to do and certain values go up quicker. So, for example, stamina, um, happiness or whatnot. And then we have the vet surgery, which is the area where injured animals get into. So if they don't have a disease, but for example, like a broken leg or so, um, then they will get into the vet and 
if you need to workshop anything for your facilities or your scenery items, this will go into the workshop. This is where the mechanic does its research and he's researching new facilities or new utilities for you in the workshop. So I don't need to speak more about those. I'm going to jump over to the left hand side, which is the guest facilities. And yet again, I'm not going to go through all of them, just giving you a bit of the logic. We have different types of um, facilities. We have shops and these shops come in boxes or in no boxes, just as counters. And as you can see over here, there is a counter. This is a wonderful just a momenta counter. You can basically style a lot around this, which we will do later on. So you will have a wonderful tutorial on that. Or you can place it down as a box, which will then look like the toilet over here, which is a huge block, okay? Four by four by four block, which is kind of ugly. You can just uh, do that away. And then we have something like this, which is a restaurant, which is an even bigger building, but the bigger building comes also with a couple of uh, nice features to it because the restaurant will um, service your guests with not only food or drink, but actually both at the same time and give them also like a little recreation booth because they will also have tables linked to it on which people can sit. So we are going to build the restaurant later on so you will see exactly how that works. Um, and this is basically how you get this and there's one last bit of... Uh, you know, facility that you can place down for the guests. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to show this to you with, let's say in food area, there we also have vending machines. Vending machines are items that you can just place as path elements. As you can see, they act exactly like a bench or a bin. Uh, we're going to talk about bins and benches later on. And once you're happy with the location, you just place it down and then you're good to go. That's just what you did. Um, and so, I really highly recommend putting them into areas where you don't have a restaurant or a shop nearby, but still you want to provide your guests with some food or drinks. You can just place them uh, next to the path. And also what's kind of uh, cool about them, you can place them in the middle of a path and then you can also rotate them if you want to with your shoulder buttons. Uh, or you just press it once and then rotate with your left mini stick. Um, or you press X and rotate it. So there are a couple of ways of rotating it. Um, and here you also have like the dial menu, but it just allows you to this. But as soon as you go back to the corner of your path, it automatically will snap. And you can put it even to the inside or the outside of your path, just like so, and plop it here. So that's how you would be to do it, okay? Very simple. I think there is not really that much I need to talk about, but there's one more facility type or type of facility we need to quickly talk about, and this is the exhibit. The exhibit. Okay, now, I, I think it's the point to talk about that. For most of you, this will be obvious, but... This game separates animals in habitat animals. They go into habitats that you build yourself. Every single bit you will build yourself and we will build this later on together. And we will have exhibit boxes just like that one in which we have a snake. And the snake over here is having a couple of things to it. It does have an operational plant. And now if I do say non-operational, it's going to be like this. It's going to be closed. But you can actually dis uh, enable it again. And over here, we have certain enrichment items for our snake. So if we click them on off, they will disappear on screen. But we will take care of that later again a bit more in detail. So this is exactly how small exhibits basically work. So there's there's really not that much to talk about. Um, you can then also style the walls of it, for example, by going in and, and, and choosing, for example, a 3D facade. And then if we zoom in, you can see there is this cool wall in the background. But there is also like a 2D version of it, which looks like a bit more jungle. And then there are some specific ones. So for example, rainforest um, that look kind of cool too uh, so you can style them a little bit so you get a kind of a little bit of control and there is a second type of exhibit which we are not going to cover um, too much in this tutorial because uh, you know you can you can do it yourself if you want to but uh, I decided to go for the bigger and more important ones which are the habitats now let me just quickly show this there is the walkthrough exhibit and once we place this one down it just looks like an exhibit but kind of scaled up dramatically and well, actually, it exactly is what it is, you know. This is a huge scaled up version of it. And um, once you put an animal in, it automatically creates the exact same 
uh, thing over here, like you will have automatically generated stuff in there. And with some toggles in the menu, you can then change the style of it. Um, so you would now to get an animal from the market, put it in and style it. The only difference is in this specific case, people can actually walk in and get close up to the animal. So for example, if we were now to say the wall is not solid, but none, and this one is going to be glass, and this one is going to be netting, and this one is going to be none. Uh, and also the ceiling is going to be, what is the ceiling in our case? Let, let the ceiling be netting too. So, and as soon as I've done the ceiling gone, you can see they're already hanging flowers. So this is the box then in which people can go through. And we also, as you can see, have some flower pots hanging down. I didn't notice that they will automatically be generated um, because at this point, it's just a box, okay? But as soon as you put an animal in, there will also be enrichment items appearing on the ground as you do it. And then you can style that after your liking. If you are interested, I have a lot of videos on my channel of how you do that and um, how you do exhibits because they work exactly the same on console as on PC. So there's no real need um, for, for you to see something else. Okay, one last thing before we are done with part one of the habitat uh, of the tutorial, which is good for me because that means that I'm uh, I'm in for a little bio break. Uh, but you will have a continuous flow of of the tutorial. I I said it's gonna be a super long one. Okay, so don't hate me for that. But the last thing we're doing is we're doing a little fence over here that is going to be um, used for our invisible fence we put on earlier. But before we do this, I quickly need to talk about one thing called prefabs. Prefabs are something that is already rather important on the PC version of this game, but it is kind of 10 times more important on the console version of the game. Now, what do I mean by prefabs? Well, obviously, you could grab yourself some blueprints from the store. So if we were here to go to blueprints and we say, okay, well, let's see if there's also some nature or so in here. Like there are tons of blueprints, for example. Look, there are some really cool nature stuff over here. New world nature scene. Look at that. If we were to put that one down, oh my God, that doesn't even look that doesn't even look that shabby, okay? So you you like that. It's it, it's maybe okay, but you want to do something else. And I'm going to show you what we do. So we are not going to go into the free webs. We are actually going to go to nature, okay? And then in nature, we are going to put a couple of elements down. So what I want you to do is I want you to go into the menu and look for items that you will use throughout your build. And it doesn't matter if it's if it's like a habitat, for example, over here, which is going to be the foremost and black bear. And we know that the foremost and black bear is some kind of, you know, foresty habitat vibe that we are going to do. So what we're going to do, we are going to choose, for example, this over here. Now, on the right hand side, we have a lot of settings and not I'm not going to go through all of them because we will learn them as we go in detailed building later on. However, in this specific case, the radial menu comes in absurdly important because in here you can switch between certain things relatively quickly. But if you do prefab specifically with, na with nature, there is one option I want to highlight and this is the random rotation that is already turned on because I had to put it on, on default. What it does, and therefore I need to use a bit of a different piece to show you. Um, let me just show this to you by using, uh, I think, if I go down, I, I'm, I'm going to use a piece in which it's very visible. And I'm going to use this this tree stump over here, the broken cherry tree. Now, I'm placing one down. And now, as you can see, I place it again and place it again. And it always automatically rotates a little bit. So it's... It's really, it's really easy to understand, okay? So as you, oops, as you can tell, let's undo these things. Very simple. Very, very simple. But we want to do the prefab, as I said. Now, we are going to go back into nature. And in nature, we are going to look for a couple of things that may actually be usable for us, okay? Now, one thing that happens, as you can see, as I move over, um, my piece is just going up a little because it's aligning to the piece, and I don't want that. To get rid of this, you just need to once move it up and down, hold down your X key, and just flick the left stick a little. And once you are happy with your height, you can then move it also through the other piece, okay? So I'm gonna place a couple of these bracken pieces here and there. That looks nice to me. 
That's very nice to me, okay. Menu pops back up open. Um, I'm a little bit quick for the game right now because I'm just flying through the menus over here. Now, um, if we go down and, for example, I'm just going to use a couple more pieces in here. Uh, it's not going to be the same as you will see later because I have done the build previously. But, you know, we can also use this bush, for example, put one of these in. And then let's also go to... What else do we have in here? Like, there's so many nice pieces you could use. Um, but I'm gonna make them a little bit more fitting for our scene over here. Yeah, I could go through this. Let's let's choose the next piece I find, because that, otherwise it's gonna be too long. Oh, there's so much good stuff in here. Okay, I'm almost... Oh, look at that. It, oh, that, that is good to know. It automatically flicks up to the top. That is not on PC, but in here it's good. So as soon as you're on the very bottom and you flick once down, it brings you all the way back up. Yeah, I'm going to use the Alpine Affiliate thingy over here. Move it down a little so it's sticking in the middle a little. So there you go. Okay, now look. This is a cool pattern of, of whatever, you know. And how about you know, duplicating this. Because at this point, if you click on one piece, dang it, it's just one piece. But well, we want to make it a group. So you hold down your A key, and then this menu appears, the multi-select tool. And you just brush over everything over here. Make sure to really cover everything. And then you can see right, the, the screen tells you 10 selected objects. Fine. Hit the X key, and then you have basically... Um, confirm the selection and now to the top right you will flick once to the right and say merge this into a group boom done well if you are what well, i'm not but if you are a very obsessed person about organizing you can just click the group and then push the right mini stick and you'll be able to rename your group and say i don't know uh i don't know flowers let's just quickly do this flowers bam zack there you go or oh, flower whatever now you've named this flower and you've got the group what you can do now is you can just select the group and the radial menu as i said is your friend hold it down and look at that you've got a couple of options and what i want to do is i want to duplicate and surface move it so boom i've done that and i'm gonna zoom out and f go to the sec look at that I've just, I've just copied that around and I can now put it down, flick that around once more and I've got covered the ground. I can go into my habitat and I can just lower it down with the same controls as we've just learned. Hold down your X key, just move it slightly down. There you go. Boom. Look at that. And now if you want to just stay in that group and completely go nuts with the group, I'm going to show you one better trick even. You go inside of a group, just click the group, and then move to edit the group. You are in the group. Look at that. Awesome. And once you're in the group, you will then also hold down the multi-select, brush over everything you have, and then your radial menu, as soon as you confirm that, you say radial menu again, duplicate and surface move. Now, if you had the random rotation enabled previously, like if you've enabled that on default at the moment, the entire group will random rotate for you. Look at that. You just go through here and it just automatically randomly flicks around and so it makes your entire group seem supernatural. You just go in here and spam this like crazy, okay? So it doesn't even matter. Like, make it very lush. Let's do here something like this, you know, and then we want to have it here a little bit to there and then down here you don't want to have it floating so in this case we just hold down the x key or if you want to be precise in this specific case you can also hold down and say advance move and then you just move to your up and like to the y key and then just move it slightly down slightly down as long as it works there you go you're happy with that okay fine push it down and now it's going to stay exactly in this space and you can exactly move it along the axis if you want to so if you want to be a bit more precise in this specific area you can do so and then just advance rotate it to gain a bit more control over it and there you go look the entire group is created and if you want to be very clever now and you say you know what that looks good but i want to make it sink in a little bit more into the ground to make it not so lush like it is well you guessed it you go into your radial menu and go to advanced move Leave it, and then you go to your y-axis, and then you can move the entire group. Look at that. Or you move it down, and now 
for my specific case, I want to go really a little bit more down. And then look at that. Awesome. Okay, now from above, that doesn't even look so bad, does it? If we go into the group and we are going to edit the group again, just move with your arrow keys to edit the group, we can then, just to make it a little bit less repetitive, just flick over the different things and just delete a couple of items. Just just move over, you know, just don't, don't, don't do it too much, just, just kind of move over a little and then you see that you just delete a couple of items here and there just to make it nice looking. There you go. And once you're happy, you just leave it or you add a couple of other pieces to it and this is that. You are done and this looks so good and you've been so quick and you all did this from the one group you've previously created. And exactly the same, you can edit this with our fence bees, which we are just briefly doing. This is not the full build tutorial, this is just to showcase how you can efficient, like build a lot more efficient rather than uh, very finicky. So therefore, we are in this case going to go to the construction menu. And I'm gonna show you a specific trick that a lot of people from the Planet Coaster days know. Um, this one is, is a nice one. It's a really nice one, okay? So we're gonna go to the menu over here and we're gonna say we go to only walls. At the moment, we only need walls. And then what I want to do in this case, I wanna use the filter and I'll go all the way over here. And I'm gonna say in my specific case, I wanna use the concrete. So let's say the Kong and there you go. I'm not sure. Yeah, look at that. It already presents me with the option concrete and then you are greeted only with concrete items. Press B to go out of the filter mode and then you just confirm that you want to have all. And now we have a couple of options. These two pieces that are above each other now are the perfect uh, example. The top one has a little nine dot icon to the top left of it, which is a grid icon. A grid icon is basically telling you these yellow outlines are exactly the grids on which you can build. If I press this down, you can see I can only move it alongside the grid. There is no way to get in the middle of it. Uh, with the shoulder buttons, I can flick it by 90 degrees. But as you can see to the right hand side, you don't even have control over the angle you want to rotate this. This is because it is a angle, like a grid piece, you know. But grid pieces are not even that bad, you know. They come in with a very nice treat. But let's say we wanted to have the other piece below there because this other piece is very nice because it's just half of its size and I want to have a bit more control. Now, as you can see, I can move this thing freely. I can even go into the advanced rotate move and, and do everything. Like if I even turn off the angle snap, oh my God, I can just rotate this in every angle. I can even uh, even go and, and make, make crazy things with it, you know? This, this would be neat, wouldn't it be? Okay, well, I, I think you're right, this would be nice. However, there is a little trick to do somehow the same, but still be quicker in building. And this is a specific piece I want to highlight. And this is a piece maybe never used. And this is the wall station surround O2. Every single um, set in Planet Zoo comes with this very piece. If you use this piece and you sink it into the ground, just like I do over here, you have the exact same as if you were to use this piece. The only thing is that it's on the grid and the fact that it's on the grid will come in handy. So let's delete first of all this other piece over here, which we are not going to need anymore. So can I just delete this piece please? Uh, oh, I'm in the filter, I'm sorry, this is why. Uh, I, I'm just gonna go out and delete this piece. Okay, now. Lovely bit. We want to take this one as a fence. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you why this is so clever. Uh, I want to keep on building with this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the edit of the group. Let me just go edit the group. And as soon as we have the yellow highlights to the right and left of the screen, we know we are in building. Now let's go back to the construction pieces, but this time around, I'm going to go all the way to the main menu and I'm also going to get rid of my filter. Or actually, I'm going to get rid of it like this because I now want to go and say, I want to have wood in, oops, no, whoop, whoop. No, I want to have wood, two of those, wood. And then hit enter. And at this point, 
you will have only wooden pieces now in your menu. So um, if I were to say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to go to all pieces and then I'm going to go and search for the dedicated wood piece I like. And, you know, through the menu flicking, there are a couple of lovely pieces I would love to use, but uh, I think I'm going to go for this one. So this is the one meter wall, or actually, you know, I'm just going to use the two meter version of it uh, because this is a bit nicer. Now, if I select this one and I'm going to move this over here, you can see it automatically snaps to the side. Why does it do it? Well, because I have an option enabled here on the right hand side and this is position snap. If I turn this off, you can see it stops doing this. But I want to also do something for beforehand. Now, as I'm building a, bu a very much more straight piece now, I don't want to have the random rotation anymore because this will offset my pieces every single time and I don't want this. So I'm going to put off here and I'm going to say the position snap on. This is the easiest way to align your pieces to an existing piece. So I want to have this thing lay down on this piece now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over until the angle snap Boom, hits over here. And then I go into the dial menu and I'm gonna say advanced move. Now you can see there is a bit of an issue. It's not on the 90 degree angle. The reason for that is because I didn't have random rotation turned off when I selected the piece from the menu. You always have to turn it off and then go all the way back into the menu. And then you have to select the piece again. And now, if I go back into advanced move, boom, there you go. It is perfectly 90 degree angled towards your piece. Now, the important bit now is that the move snap is at least, uh, not the move snap, this is something we talk about later. Don't you dare to talk about move snap now. What we're going to do is we need to talk about the angle snap. Where's the angle snap, by the way? It's not in here. So let's go into the advanced rotate and there's the angle snap. So the angle snap has to be turned on for what we are doing right now because otherwise it's not going to work because we want to lay this piece down by exactly 90 degrees. So here's the Z axis and I'm going to flick this thing so long until it is exactly 90 degrees. Look at that. Perfect. And now what I want to do, I want to go back into the advanced move and I want to go to the X axis. Okay. Um, so Let's go to the x-axis, there you go, and move it all the way up. And now I'm just going to select the z-axis for a second because I want to bring it in the center of it. Yeah, the closer you go, the more easy it is to bring it into the position, into exactly the position you want to. So, yeah, go even closer if you can, and you just build it. Awesome. Okay, now you've built this, it's very nice looking. And the only thing I want to have is like a bit more of a thinner upper layer now, okay? So just to make the fence look like a fence. And therefore, I'm going back from construction into Habitat. Because inside of a group, you can use all the pieces the game offers, not only from construction, but also from Habitat, Nature and Facilities. In my specific case, I'm going to go down to the Enrichment Items and to the Climbable Items, because they there is still the filter. Let's get rid of the filter real quick. Um, there you go. Um, in here, you will also have a lot of climbable pieces. And I'm going to go for the climbable lock thin one meter. This is the one I want to select that one. And it's again automatically snapping to here. In our case, this is the perfect orientation already. So I'm going to go only to advanced move. And I'm going to go to the axis I want to. And in my case, this is that one just to move it up exactly like this and I want to then go back to the z-axis to just slightly push it into the middle I'm fine with it and then just go to the y-axis to lower it down just a tiny bit more because I'm not really happy with the height I just want to have it slightly awesome okay and now I can just place it and go to the x-axis and kind of place a couple more of those just let's do four okay four sweet and now I'm going to change the piece to the 2 meter one. Again, go here and use the position snap to align it properly. Go to the advanced rotate. Angle snap is turned on. Awesome. Lay it down. Switch over to, oops, not the surface move. Um, switch over to the, oops, this move. Oop, why did it, there you go. Let me just put it in back in. Thank you so much. Advanced move. 
and then go to the axis that you need to. Well, I, you can also move it up first of all and then just rotate it. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to move it up first of all um, because it will always rotate around the origin of your piece. So you can bring it already up into the height that you see it uh, being correctly on. It also is perfectly aligned to the side. Awesome. And now I'm going to switch to the advanced rotate. The angle is already correct. And then I'm going to flick it over. Boom. There you go. This is awesome. Now, look at that. Now, we have created this thing, and there is this wonderful fence piece. Let's grab our fence and move it, okay? So hold the radial menu, say surface move, and we're going to move it over here. And then once you're not in a group, you can at least rotate your piece freely on the ground. This is awesome because it's not on the grid anymore. It's not tied to the grid anymore because it's outside of the group. And now you can place it exactly in a position. You can even go to the advanced rotate and then find yourself a good spot. I'm gonna go and say angle snap turn off and I'm gonna just align it properly here to my invisible fence. As you can tell, once you're in building, it will automatically highlight the hidden barriers. As you can see on this option, it said highlight hidden barriers all. You can also just check nearby or off then you don't see them, but I highly recommend to make them on nearby. Okay, cool, you've done that, you're very happy with this, I'm very happy that you are very happy with this, and you place it down, cool. Now, how do we get more of these things? Well, easy, you just click on that thing, whoops, you click on this thing, and then you hold down your radial menu again, and you say duplicate, boom, there you have it. And now, you just place that very carefully next to it, Hold down your X key and, oop, well, just come up, come back up, come back up, there you go, and do that again, put it down, put it down, there you go, just find the right height, easy, that was really easy, wasn't it, no, it wasn't, that, that was crap, wasn't it, that, that just took forever, that is not how you do that, so go back to your piece, select the piece, and now you do say advanced move, but you don't do advanced move, but you do duplicate an advanced move. So what that does is it copies the piece, but it will remain in the exact same position as before. And now if you switch your axis to the Z-axis to only move it alongside the axis, there you go. It's going to be exactly on the same axis right next to it. And so you can do this multiple times and it's easier. However, there is an even more simple way. Let's open the group that we just have copied. So this is the new group. And now I want to go into the group and edit the group. And inside of the group, it is important. We have to be inside of the group. I hold multi-select and select all my pieces. I confirm the selection. And I'm going to use my radial menu again. Very important. We have to be inside of the group. If you follow me now, make sure to your top right the yellow flag is available so that you are inside of a group. Hold down your radial menu. And now you say duplicate. And what will happen now is that your piece is now flicking on the grid. And if we now change the grid size from 4 meters to 2 meters, you can put the piece just next to it and build a fence. Look at how quickly I'm building a fence right now. You can even make like a corner piece. There you go. And I'm going to all the way over here. Let's just keep this going on this side. Look. Bam, bam, let's make a little step in here because that looks nicer. Bam, 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 fence done. In seconds, I have built this fence because I made use of the grid. The reason why this works so easy is because of the grid pieces having always the exact same increments in which you're moving. It's making life easy because you can't rotate this on any other axis. It'll automatically make this beautiful choice for you that it uh, doesn't allow any choice other than putting it in the exact same position. Uh, so that is very simple. This is how you build fences. And now it is time for a bio break. A little hint from my side. As I have done this tutorial previously again uh, already and I lost my progress. This is the second attempt already on the uh, on this tutorial. So you will be greeted after the cut with a slightly changed map. It's, it's mostly the same but a couple of little things are different from the version you are knowing. But I'm gonna go into my bio break now and I'm gonna talk to you in seconds. But for me personally this is a weird kind of Rudy in the past, Rudy in the future thing. But now let's go on with the tutorial.
Alright, my bio break is done and we are now getting to the part that you have been looking forward to the most or the least, <laughs> the one you are scared for or hyped for. We are now getting into building in Planet Zoo and this is effectively also bringing us already uh, a lot closer towards the end of this tutorial. Well, the end is kind of hilarious because this will still take a little bit of time, but we are going to do something very nice and we are starting with the restaurant over here um, because that's going to help us to understand how we are building. Now, let's choose, first of all, the building over here. And what we got to do is we're going to go all the way down here to the controls and say select the group because that's what we want to do. We want to go to the restaurant too. And then we're going to say we want to edit the group. And as you can see, we are now greeted again with this wonderful grid, but we are going to lower down the grid really quickly. Um, and we're going to bring this down uh, to... Uh, yeah, like a loss, a lot lesser value. I don't even know why this is not working. Anyways, we're just gonna put a put a piece in, and then uh, this should actually do the trick. So let's just put a. It doesn't even matter. Let's put just one piece down. There you see it. Boom. And now we should actually be able to uh, change the grid. As soon as I have a grid piece, let's uh, use this one over here. There you see it. And now we should actually be able to change the grid it doesn't even what is that i think it's it's like a little bug over here there you go now i can change i don't know what exactly i needed to place it down and now you can finally change it again i just want to get rid of the pieces though um let's quickly do this and also undo this least uh, thingy here we just go out of the menu and then undo the last two placements but now the grid is set to a meter this is what i wanted to do and now i can also change the grid fine okay the first thing i wanted to do is that you change the grid to let's say two meters two meters is fine let's not go down all the way to the lowest because that's going to be weird um but this is going to be very helpful for building now what we're going to do is we go into construction and again as we are on console we want to do certain things differently okay so let's first of all get rid of the uh, lock over here because that's definitely not something we need um, but I want to do this with a stone piece again so let's type in stone whoops uh, so that we have really quickly I can't type uh, that we can have quickly a stone piece there you go um, and then confirm <clears throat> and go to B into the menu and now we have only stone pieces. This time around I want to do something more classical looking, you know, I want to go for a classic zoo look and therefore I'm going to start my build with a classic wall piece just like one in this group and I'm going to go with the brick wall that is one meter tall. I'm going to choose this one and you can see it's snapping to the grid and you actually have the option to put it on this side which is the inner line look look at that line of the grid or you put it to the outer line both of them go but this is basically how the grid functions just to show you um, if you I zoom it out, I can I can basically move it all the way here on the grid and if I use the shoulder buttons I can rotate this by 90 degrees, but there's no way as you can see also in the radial menu I can't really go to advanced move and this is because this is a Grid piece just as I said at the beginning with the indicator highlighting however um, This is a good piece and so I'm going to do this just like this now um, I don't want to go and build the entire thing right now and I'm going to show you real quick why I'm going to put down two. Two of those will go down because this is exactly what I needed to do. So um, I'm quite happy with this um, and I'm, I'm going to have something else in here. So we are still in stone and I'm going to go and have another stone piece as of the wall. Actually, let's see if we have limestone or so in here as well. There you go. This is limestone. So um, we should actually go down even further. So many DLC items that are not unlocked yet. There you go. This is the limestone set I was looking for. And I'm going to use the two meters wall and I'm going to stack this on top of that one. At the moment, you can see it's not going to stack. But if I do auto stack, then you can see it's just plop in. Why is it not going? Hello? Oh, it's because this, okay, I need to put this on one meters and then it should automatically, yeah, there you go. It just automatically jumps on top of this thing. Very nice indeed. Now, I want to do one trick over here uh, to showcase how you can make buildings appear a little bit smaller than they usually are. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go uh, back into the menu and I'm going to change the filter back again. I'm going to delete stone, say, uh, wait, wait, how, how are you doing? Why are you not doing this? Okay, it's gone. So it should actually be, yeah, there you go. Now we have everything unlocked again. And I'm going to go to the menu where we have the roofs. Because 
um, in this case, I want to put the roof a little bit lower on uh, on my side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go a little bit more creative in this sense, and I'm going to use um, this piece over here. You can see we have different types of roofs, and they have different sizes. I'm going to quickly show this to you. So we've got this asphalt roof, and um, I don't want to have the auto stack at the moment because that annoys me. So let's just keep it there. You can see if you've disabled that, it is always uh, going on the same height. Now, I do want to bring this up a little. So let's one, two, three ticks up because that's the height I want to go for. And now you can see this entire thing takes up four by four meters, okay? You can obviously rotate this and then put it into the pos uh, position where you want it. But obviously, as this is too low, it would actually cause some issues. And if I do put it here, you can see there is still this little gap on top where you can see this uh, facility building. This is something we don't want. Um, but there are different pieces, you know, and if I go back into the menu, you can see there is, for example, this double pitch corner. And this one is a little bit of a smaller choice. And if we use this one and go up, 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 there you can see it. We are exactly filling in the gap between the two heights. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to place this one all the way here to the corner, as you can see. And this will make up for a very nice corner in the end. However, we also need something that goes alongside this, and this is exactly this piece. We're going to put this one all the way up here. There you go. See, this is perfect because now we have done something super nice with like this little awning in front. But the problem is, um, there is still a little gap in between of something that we don't want, you know, there is like, there's no piece in between. And um, I could also go with like the brick there again, but I think I don't want this. So um, let's go back to building pieces and go then all the way to walls. And in the wall section, we're going to go to all. And I'm going to use in this specific case, I'm going to have some breeze block on up here, you know, that, that should be fine. And we're going to bring this um, up to the height we need it to. So that is a fine height. The reason why I did this the way I did it is uh, relatively simple because I wanted to have it this way. But there's one thing I don't like. It, it almost looks like a, as if the awning, like the roof has no supports. And what I want to do now, I want to have a support in the center. And uh, you can see there are some cool pieces in here. As you can see, there are like some uh, columns or so. Um, and let's see if we can find something suitable for us. And I think maybe like a concrete pillar. Oh, no, that, that is definitely too big, but we can actually use this in the center later on. Um, and if I go, for example, here for the position snap, you can see it snaps to a certain position. That is very helpful if you want to have it exactly in the middle. And you know what? I want to have it in the middle. So once you have the snap act, uh, enabled, you can see over here, you can then switch into the advanced rotate move, which I think is brilliant because from here on, you can put it exactly in a position where you want to have it. I want to first of all rotate this to the straight. Oh, it doesn't even make it straight. Oh, that is that is awesome. Why didn't it do it? Um, I should have definitely put it on... Ah, uh, okay, let's let's do that again. I'm not sure. Normally, it should put it on a 90 degree angle in here, and I'm not sure why it didn't do it. Let's see if the advance... Okay, well, that is, that is odd. Um, anyways, I'm just going to still rotate this because it will remain at least somewhat correct in the center. And then let's see that we can bring it with the blue one to a straight level. Now, it's not going to work to a straight level. Why the hell isn't it? Um... Yeah, okay, well, that doesn't work. This is odd. Normally, what should happen is if you choose that and you put it in the center, it normally is 90 degree angle to it, but it's not. This is, I think this is a little bit of an issue. Oh, no, it's because of, the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, this is the good point in doing such a big tutorial with you guys. If the random rotation is on, that's not going to happen. I did this mistake, not on purpose, I promise. Um, but now you can see, if you have the problem like this and you want to adjust the piece, you need to turn off the random rotation. If I now choose the piece and have the position snap enabled, you will see that it is perfectly 90 degree angle to it. This is exactly what I wanted to have over here. So we can enable the angle snap again. Um, and now, if you go to the rotation here, you can just easily rotate this perfectly straight and then use the advanced move tool to bring it all the way down here to have the, like this very perfect alignment in the center, which we do want to have, okay? So if we, we are happy with this, um, we're going to search for a different piece over here. Um, as I said, I want to go and have something else that is also pretty nice looking. Look, we have all these like wooden pieces over here, but they potentially are a little bit too big, aren't they? Yeah, that, that is still too big. Uh, let's go to... 
what else do we have? I want to have like a thinner piece for that. Um, there are a couple of other pieces from different packs over here. Uh, I think this one over here is thinner. That's the one we also use for our fence. So let's... Oh, okay. This is not thinner. Um, <laughs> my mistake. Okay, let's see if there's anything else in store we can use. Otherwise, we go and use the trick we've just used. Oh, no. There you go. Look, there is... This one is definitely a little bit smaller. There you go. And I'm going to use the same trick to align it. And now what I'm go going to do is I'm just going to use the move right away. And now you can see I'm just easily moving this all the way up here. Okay. <clears throat> that is perfectly fine. And this time around, I'm going to enable the move snap because now I can just move it to the position I want it to. I'm just going to go for the red red arrow here to move it alongside this axis. And then I can easily snap it to the positions where I need it and where I want it because I want to have this roof covered from all the sides. But one trick, very important, I'm only doing this to one side because as soon as we copy that over la later on, this piece here, <coughs> this very one in your center, I'm just going to quickly move to that one. Let's zoom in a little. There you go. This piece, what you can see over here, will then be copied and will be positioned over here. So I'm going to show you because this is exactly what we need to do now. I did basically a little blueprint for our building and this is exactly how I want it to look. Okay. So what we're going to do now, and this is relatively easy, we're going to multi-select the pieces. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to basically check all the pieces we want. Okay. So at this point, we have too many pieces uh, already uh, you know, chosen. I just want to have, first of all, uh, let's see if I can do this. Let's see, like, uh, that's still not working. There you go. Multi select and just one and two and three and four and just that roof five. And now we've got to see that we can select these pieces one and uh, it's a little bit of a finicky thing, too. Damn it. Let me just go closer to it. There you go. Hello. Yeah, it's, it is a little bit of a tricky thing. Three. And we get ya. We got ya. Five, four, whatever. Nine. Do we select everything? Make sure that you have everything selected that you wanted to. And then you just confirm your selection. And now what you can obviously do is you can easily duplicate that. And what I like to do is just, first of all, put it all the way back. So if we need to copy that again, which we most certainly will, um, you can easily grab it. Now, I will actually get rid of this piece over here because that is just in our way. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to multi-select everything in here. Should be nine pieces. Awesome. Uh, let's do that again nine pieces, confirm, and now what we're going to do is again duplicate. The reason why you don't see any other option is because I'm using now the grid pieces to copy over some stuff. Um, just to showcase this to you in a second, and I'm, I'm going to just quickly build this a uh, little bit over here. So I'm just going to bring this in all the way around, you know, all the walls will be going in relatively quickly. So here we go. And I'm going to make this one wider and I'm going to show you in a second why, because I want to get the toilet involved as well. So let's just do this. There you go. The toilet shall be part of this building too, just not completely the same way. So I'm going to keep this relatively open. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this a little bit differently in a second. But the, the good bit is that we are uh, we are making progress with this area. So I'm going to leave that open because we only need a roof, okay? So what we got to do is we got to get rid of this roof. No, actually, you know what we do? We're going to select this roof, first of all. And we're going to duplicate this one. And we're going to bring this in all the corners required. Whoops, that was my mistake. Uh, let's get rid of it. Uh, first of all, let's undo this. And I'm going to select this again. Whoop, come on, and say duplicate. Yeah, on console, you definitely have to be a little bit more cautious in positioning pieces because sometimes, as you can tell, this is uh, causing some issues if you don't put it in the perfect spot. Now, I'm just going to put the edges in just to have some edges, and um, that is fine. And now what we can do is we can basically get rid of this piece, select this one, duplicate that one, put it as a as an awning in here. Also, uh, that, that doesn't work. I, I thought maybe we can make like a little bit of an indoor section here, but uh, you know what? I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna do this real quick. 
it doesn't even matter. Um, so we have done this, and now this is the restaurant, how it looks from the outside already. Look, that looks quite good, but where the heck is our uh, preparation area gone? Well, I'm gonna show you real quick. We are going to zoom in, and then, whoops, uh, we are basically going to delete this piece, and this piece, and all we go. There it is. Look, I planned it in a way that we have this very nicely done, and I, I think it looks really good. The same goes obviously over here to the entrance. So I'm going to just make the entrance look good. So there you go. And what I'm going to do with this piece is, I'm just going to go to the advanced move tool, and I'm going to bring this all the way over here. Now, you can see, if I did this this way, I wanna maybe undo the action because it would have been way better to use the increments, you know? And in this specific case, uh, I can't do this, but I can obviously, first of all, say advanced move, and then the contextual menu changes. Oh God, I love it so much. And then we have the snaps, and we're just going to do this, and snap the snap over here, and then we say advanced move. Holy crap, what happened? Holy heck, where am I? What the heck? Uh, oops. There you go. What 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 did happen over here? Uh, let me just fly all the way back and go back into the restaurant. I have no idea what happened. I did something and all uh, all of a sudden the camera flew over the place, all over the place. <laughs> Not sure what happened. Yeah, anyways, we just go back in and whoops, we select the piece. If I get there, hello. So let me just select the piece. Awesome. And then what you want to do is ad duplicate and advance move. This is, yeah, there you go. Because this option, the duplicate and advance move, uh, will give you the piece from the origin of your existing piece. Just to showcase that again, um, if you select a piece like this one and you want to duplicate that, there is a duplicate and m surface move option, which will give you the piece and then you can freely move it alongside the ground. And also let me just do the uh, move off here and you can bring it up and you can see I can freely move it around my cursor however if I don't want that and I want to build this a bit more precise I'm gonna click on this piece and then you can say duplicate and advance move so what it will give you is exactly the gizmo in the first second and then you can place your pieces wherever you want. And I specifically want this one to be over here now. So look at that, this is awesome. But we need a couple of things. We are not just quite done yet, okay? So um, the building looks already pretty fancy, you know? It looks pretty damn good. Uh, one thing I wanna do is, because I think this is a cool design and I want to use this for my other builds too, I'm gonna do this, select all of them, confirm the selection, and then I'm gonna uh, oops, sorry. What did I um, even do? Go out of here. Go out of here. There you go. Let's go back in and I disabled the climbing. I wanted to go and edit the building real quick. There you go. And select everything in the selection over here. This is the nine pieces. Yes. Confirm. And now on the top right, you see the option split selection from group, which is exactly what we are going to do. Now this is an own group on its own. See, this is a group over here, a big one. And you can see this one is not highlighted. So um, that is very easy to see. Uh, also vertical. Oh, this is, this is nice. This way you can also move your camera up and down. Oh, I didn't know. I d that helps to find the right spot in building. If you hold down uh, X, you can move your camera up and down, which I didn't even see that it is possible. But that helps tremendously in finding the right options. Okay, well, never mind then. Um, good to know. Very good to know. Okay, cool. Just keep that in mind. Also, I think we didn't speak about that, but if you find it uh, too quick, uh, too, too finicky in building to find the right things, there is a very good trick how to do certain things because you can also do the following. Uh, you can, oops, that's the wrong mode. Uh, you can go and choose the explore mode and bring yourself down here. And you can also build from the explore mode. What this gives you is control over the area a lot better from below here. So um, specifically on console, I found this very helpful because now as we go in building, I'm gonna go and search for a wonderful, wonderful door, you know? And I'm gonna go for a bigger one that kind of fits in here, I guess. Um, Look, we're going to use this kind of classic door. And now you can see this is a little bit odd over here. So I'm gonna have the position snap on. There you go. And now from the position that it snapped to, now it's perfectly aligned to this wall. We can obviously also do this on several other areas. Um, I wanna go and go into the advanced move from over here. And now I'm gonna move this thing around. And the cool bit is, 
you are now in this mode of uh, explore mode and you're not moving your camera around because you can't, literally can't move and you have a way more precise way of building. So this is pretty neat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it down, I zoom out a little so I can see it better. And um, yeah, I think we can also make like a double door. Why not? So maybe entrance and exit or so. So I'm gonna bring one in here like this. And the other one goes all the way to the other side. Awesome. So it's not like perfectly aligned, but it's fine. And as soon as you hit B, you have control over everything again. But what you want to do is you want to select, whoops, let me just press B a couple more times. Um, so I want to, oops, am I not in the group anymore? I want to go back into the group. Hello, let me just go into the group. There you go. And now I want to obviously select a piece, this one over here. And I want to select more than this one. So uh, let me just press B and say multi-select. And now I'm gonna select this, this, and this. And I'm gonna delete those. Oh wait, do I have to? Oh, okay, sorry. I thought I can just delete the whole thing at once, but I need to first of all select them all and then confirm the selection. And now I can just well, I can press Y to delete or, you know, whatever. Uh, in your case, might also be on PlayStation the um, wonderful uh, triangle. Now, we also want to duplicate and move this one because I want to have, like, another one that is on this side just to mirror this. There you go. Awesome. Look at that. We have made a wonderful door. And now, obviously, the last thing that is missing is this entrance here to our wonderful toilet. What I want to do over here is I want to do this with non-grid pieces to showcase also how non-grid pieces work. And it's actually not too much of a big deal, you know. What we're going to do is we go back to the wall segment over here. And we're going to say all wall pieces. Yes. Awesome. And now you can see there is also a selection I have at the moment. There is no icon to the top left. And this means this is no grid piece. Now, uh, I want to give a bit of a contrast to the building. So I'm going to go with, uh, let me see what else we could do over here. Wooden panels wouldn't make too much sense, but we can have some painted brick or actually, you know what, what else? Let, let's use the plaster. I think plaster is fine. And then we go into the plaster section and see if there is, uh, oops. Oh, we don't have the, ah, this is, this is quite funny. Okay, we're going to use the stone brick instead. Um, this will make a lot more sense. So we have this one. And now as I have the position snap enabled, it is awesomely perfect uh, aligned here to the toilet. You could also try to find different spots. But honestly, this is a good spot. And now from over here, I go into the advanced rotate. Make sure that angle snap is turned on. And I'm going to rotate the wall in the way that I needed to. So we're going to bring this all the way to vertical. Perfect. That is... That is pretty much what I wanted. And now let's go to the advanced move and first of all, bring it down to a point where we need it. And then we can move it over and just cover that little bit of the wall. Awesome. I'm not sure if it sticks out to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm lower it down all the way until it works here. There you go. This is fine. So look at that. I have, I've built this thing and now I can also move that over to cover up the center here. Look. That is quite nice. Come on, just do that. And I'm also having a little bit of a connection piece here on this side. Sweet. And since there is a gap over here we need to solve, um, I'm just going to bring this thing forward a bit. And I'm going to move this to the other side to see if it already fits. Well, that is that's almost perfect, but we need to rotate that a little. So let's go to the advanced rotate piece and then our tool. And I'm just going to rotate this thing around. That should be good. And I'm going to go back to the advanced move. And this time around, I'm going to search for the lower part over here so I can move this freely on the ground. And I'm going to search for a spot where it just fits in. There you go. That looks, that looks fine to me. So we have done this wonderful bit over here. And this is nicely embedded. But obviously, we want to have some gates in there too, right? So let's hit B two times and go back to the menu with the doors. And I'm just going to go back to the doors. And then let's see if we find a better door. Whoops. I moved too quickly. Um, and let's see if there's like another nice gate. We used this one in the front. So maybe we need something thinner or maybe this one over here is quite nice because that's relatively large but could actually act for both sides. There you go. Look at that. This looks like a double swing door that we can use. And we go into the advanced move tool and we're just going to bring this all the way. Oops. 
all the way down so it's actually aligned to the ground. Um, you can also change the widget speed, by the way, to 0 0.4 and then this is not like the, the movement is not so quick. But it's also like the, the closer you zoom, the easier it is to position things and the controller and the mini stick actually work pretty fine. So I'm not too worried about the tool itself, to be honest. Um, so here you can so we can also go out of all the menus and then you can see moving around the building just turned out very beautiful okay nice look at that we've done everything in here as of the building and the restaurant looks really fancy to be honest um what if we want to have this piece now be part of our, our other buildings now um i'm going to first of all move this thing around you know this is uh, the easiest bit grab it and move it around and see if we can maybe use it here in the back. So let's just go here and see if that could be helpful. And I think it could, you know. Maybe maybe the the upper part is a little bit too high because with these boxless shops we can we can do some more cool stuff. But um, let's just do that, okay? We're gonna place this down and the second we move over, the last bit I want to do with this building just over here, um, I want to give this plaza a fence and I want to give this thing a proper roof. So what we're gonna do is we select the thing and then we go into the edit mode obviously very quickly. And what we're gonna do with the edit mode is we're going to go now into construction again, press B, Press B again, and then we go to the roof section, and we're going to select the flat roofs, and then we're going to search something that could act like a perfect piece for us. In my specific case, I want to go with the corrugated metal roof. You can see it's now somewhere on the ground. There you go. There it is. Let's bring it up to an area where we need it. So this is this is pretty good. Let's. We have to also see that it is high enough over here, so maybe we need to go one up. There you go. Now you're done, and you can just put it in the open spaces just oops just like so and your building is fully done isn't that looking absolutely phenomenal i really love that okay now what we're going to do over here is we're going to make a mixture out of a out of a hedge and a proper fence okay so i want to have like a hedge to the right hand side and i want to have like a fence on the other side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to construction and what I'm going to do is go all the way to the main stuff and then go to the filters and let's see if we can actually have a hatch, if there is a hatch. So let's see if there is a hatch available. I'm just going to press. No, there isn't. The reason for that is pretty simple. It is in nature. So in nature, we do have these topiary hedges and um, we can just go here and basically go into the menu and say search and then I'm not sure if it's hedge or if it's topiary but we're just gonna go and type in hedge real quick and there you go they are greeted already with the hedge this is awesome so um, I can basically just go into the menu and grab myself the topiary hedge over here look at that and then we can just start and plop this down and this is exactly what I'm going to do I'm just going to go here and I'm wondering if I want to go into the well, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put this down. And now I I'm hitting B a couple of times until in the main menu. And then I'm selecting my camera mode again. And I'm going to go into the explore mode again, which is that one. And once I'm going to have this one enabled over here, I can then from over here say surface move. Okay. So this is, this is purely exactly what I wanted to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say duplicate and surface move. And from over here, I could then start and put the thing down wherever I want this, okay? It's going to be a little bit of a tricky thing to do. I'm just going to move it everywhere over here to have this hedge. And that is kind of annoying to do this way more than once, okay? So what I want to do instead is I want to I wanna then go into the advanced rotate, just give it that bit of, actually, we need to turn off the angle snap. And then we can just... And also slightly rotate it and bring it exactly into the position where we want it. But even this is still too annoying, right? This is still, it just takes ages. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to have the multi-select again. One, two, three, four, confirm. And we put them together in a scenery group. And then we are going to select this group. And then we are going to, oops, why is this not a group? Did I not confirm it? I thought I didn't. Okay, well, just do that again. Wonderful. And we're going to confirm this. And then we are going to... 
I clicked. <laughs> you should better not misclick. This is actually a little bit of a, a weird thing. If you click the shoulder buttons instead, and I wanted to go to the arrow keys. Anyways, um, you're having this, and then you just click over, merge them into a senior group. Awesome. Now click on it. We have got one group, and we're going to edit the group, okay? Now, what you can do easily now is you can just select all of them because we are in the group, you cannot select anything else. You can click here, but you will not be able to select anything because it's not within the group. This is so important um, when you work with stuff like that. And what we're gonna do over here is we're going to duplicate this from the origin. This is super important. And actually, I wanna bring this then all the way over here to the other side. And I'm just gonna bring this down. And I, I, I just figure that I need to go into a different camera mode. So we have the standard mode, but we also have the free look mode in which we can go. And the free look mode, actually, to be honest, it could be a little bit of a nicer one. Um, so that is, it's a little bit crazy, but I think if we delete this bit and we're going to take, oops, to be honest, I think I prefer the standard mode in this specific case. Um, I'm gonna go back into the standard mode and utilize the different options we have. So there you go. Yeah, that's a lot more, that's a lot more enjoyable. Um, but I want to select this one over here and then I'm gonna say, uh, oops, advanced move. And I'm gonna go to the advanced rotate and I'm gonna rotate this a little. There you go. And I'm gonna say advanced move again and move this piece exactly into the position where I want it. There is a nice position and I'm gonna duplicate this from over here. What I want is the blue axis, there you go. And one and two, there you go. Now we have done our hatch on this side and maybe you don't like these um, kind of little roots or footers or whatever trunks in the, in the lower part of it. So what we can easily do is we can just easily select all of our hedges, you know, confirm that, and then we say advanced move, and then we actually just go to the um, Y axis, and we just move it on, you know, just move it down a little. There you go. Awesome. This is pretty much how you build, okay? So I, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, because then the tutorial would go, like, forever, forever, ever, okay? Forever, ever! Um, <laughs> But we, we need to cover a couple more things, okay? So uh, this was most likely how the building works. And um, just to make things more beautiful, you would just, you know, take pieces like this one over here, for example, and then you say duplicate and move on the ground. So you would build like a little planter or area over here. And then, for example, and this is like a little bit of a fast forward thing right now, you go to nature. Obviously, you need to delete the uh, filters that you just created because otherwise you don't see everything. Just, to, uh, you know, do it that way. And then you've got access to everything again. And now you can just go through the menu. And for example, I like these uh, beech trees quite a bit. So we're gonna put one here and another one here, for example, you know. And all of a sudden, this looks absolutely amazing. But I promised you that we also do a little fence around here, right? I mean, we could just go over and use this fence again, what we have used, uh, just used over here. But that would also be a little bit boring, wouldn't it be? So what we can do instead, we can actually use the barrier system also for walls. Let me show you how we do this. Now, um, I want to have like a gabion wall over here because I feel like this could look really cool and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this one down yeah here seems to be good and from over here I'm just gonna drag it over and we can actually play around with the length so that we have this actually as long as we want to boom look at that and then I'm gonna go and reduce the length again and you can see if you're careful enough you'll be able to put it just in here Awesome, look at that, this is this is pretty much better than I thought and it works a lot quicker as well. Um, but I want to actually multi-select everything, so um, let me just, oops, can I not, can I just have the barrier and select everything, edit barrier, there you go. And I want to, this, 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 and this piece too. And can I have this one too? Yeah, I need every single piece selected. There you go. And now we can edit the uh, the height. 
and go all the way down to one meter. And then you've got a one meter tall little thing. And as you can tell, I tried to make already the hedge as the same height. And all of a sudden, you have this beautiful looking plaza over here. Uh, in order to make this little bit in between nicer, what we could do, and this is actually what we are doing right now, we're going to go to nature. And we're going to look for like a bush, okay? Something very bushy indeed is uh, pretty helpful. And since I know that in this version of the game we don't have these wonderful new bushes, uh, we are going to utilize a little trick, okay? We are going to use a tree as a bush. Look at that, this is just a bit higher. It's the perfect bush. And what we're going to do over here is we are going to say um, we want to have the random rotation turned on. And now we can just bring the bush, like which is not necessarily a bush, but you know, we can bring the this tree around. And now we're just going to sink that even further in. So as if this is a little less grown and just put the thing wherever we want. Okay. So real quick, maybe we can also have one on the other side. And now what we also need to do is we need to mix some other things in, okay? So one thing that is also pretty good in zoos is like bamboo, but also like this kind of grass is needed. And we also have our wonder weapon is always bracken, okay? Just move the bracken down a little so it stays on the same height always. And then you can just spam it in. Also, it doesn't matter if it overlaps a little into your path, okay? This is how it is in real life zoos anyway. So you could just do it that way. And maybe put a couple over here in the front too. And I mean, look how the entire theme has changed now. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to change this area here in the back a little so that people can't see too much. And um, this is also easily done with nature. And therefore what you're doing is you're going to look for a couple of bigger trees. And I think like the poplar tree over here is a bit of a bigger one. So we put one here and another one here. And if people now get into the zoo, you can see it just kind of frames this entire thing nicely. And I want to have like a bit of a smaller one too. Let's see if we find a smaller tree then that we can place there. I think the poplar tree three is a little smaller. Yeah, there you go. We need to put them a little bit more in the front here. There we go. Look, this is this is really, really cool. Really, really cool. That looks fantastic. That looks really good. Okay, but one thing we didn't do is we didn't put down any tables for our wonderful restaurant, did we? Now, what we got to do is we're going to go in and select the restaurant first of all. This is going to be the most tricky part. There you go. The restaurant is uh, selected. And now we can move through over here and we can uh, create several things. We can enable, but you will see there are no... And this is, um, this is the issue, there are no tables linked. And what we need to do, we need to place tables first of all. And there you can see the two available pieces. I want to go with a round table. And I want to say, you know, first of all, let's change the colors. You can see the icon on screen that you need to check. And then you go in here and you have got a super crazy choice of colors. And I'm going to go for like this red uh, over here. I'm going to confirm. And then I have the orange is kind of okay. Let's change the t uh, table plate to like a darker color, which is obstructed for whatever reason. What the heck? Why is it not working? Hello? I'm going to confirm. This is so odd. Why is it not using... <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, I'm not sure why it doesn't do what it should do. Well, you should be able to change the color. Oh, because I placed it down already. This is so weird. I just wanted to change the color. Okay, let's see if I can do this now. And go make it black. Okay, there seems to be a little bit of an odd thing. Or I just pressed the wrong button. I don't know what exactly I did over here. Uh, so usually you should be able to go in and say, Hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to confirm the black color over here but it just didn't do it um that that is a bit odd let's see if there is a little issue here i think there is um otherwise i can't explain because it, it just tells me select and i just put it down okay whatever we're just going to put down the tables in the color they are um and then see if we can change the color later on just put a couple of tables down and then here we go. So as I said, this is early access. So maybe there are a couple of little things that are not quite done yet. So if we check this table out and then we go in here, can we manually just change the color? Let's see if we can do this. Table surface color. Ah, there you go. This this way it works. Okay, so that is, that is the easy way of doing it. Um, so you just need to go in, select the color and then hit confirm. 
And there you go. Now we've got a black table there. Okay, that's fine. You know, I'm going to leave it the way it is because that looks that looks fine to me. Okay, this is how you confirm uh, the building of table, but it's still not linked. So what you need to do is go back to your restaurant and then go back in here and say link tables. And now you have this multi-select tool and you can say uh, you're just going to hover over all the tables that you want to link. Just one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. Once you're done, confirm it again with uh, your button and then you are more, mostly good to go. Look at that. Okay, now we let's do the last advanced things and then we are almost done putting the animals in, making sure that they have the right stuff available and then we are almost done, guys. This is so good. So, um... Before we go into the habitats, there is a, a little thing I need to do first of all. We don't have our underwater viewing just done yet. So what we are going to do, we're going to try to make our best to build this down here. So therefore we're going to go to path again and we're going to put a path down here. So let's see if we can find a spot where the path works. And I think if we plop this down here and I don't want to have the auto connect. So what, what I want is I want to have the path joining off. This is sometimes very important to click it because if I turn it on, you can see it wants to auto connect. I don't want this over here, but I want to place this. Okay. So we're going to find a good spot here to the outside where the most space is. And I'm going to plop this down right over here. Okay. That should actually be our space that we have covered already. So that is freaking nice, okay? So I'm gonna build this here. Okay, good. Now let's go out of this. And what we're gonna do is we need to build a connection on top of here. So I'm gonna go back to path and I'm seeing, okay, that doesn't work, okay? So what I have to do is I'm gonna delete this bit over here and I'm gonna try to make myself a little bit life easier by putting it here. And then there's one more. Okay, now things get a little more interesting. So uh, an option that I want to disable real quick is the flattened terrain and it is disabled, that is good. Okay, now you can see it would try to build this bridge. And now we need to do a couple of interesting things. We're going to to say flattened terrain is on and we're going to try to go for a longer bit over here there you can see angle snap turned all the way off and what I want to do now is I want to try to make a connection to this lower part there now it's a little bit of a tricky thing to do because once you build this it will flatten the ground and then it creates something like that and awesome, you have built this, but this is not what we wanted. See, it did kind of create this odd kind of staircase, but I didn't want this, okay? I, I wanted to have something else. And therefore, I'm just going to undo my last bits over here. And I'm going to see that I can make a merger first. And this is this is this little bit over here. This is a merging piece. Um, I have the feeling that I need to place my path a little bit differently, which I will do now. I'm going to delete this path and I'm going to go and change the path again to one meter and I'm going to try to disable the flattened terrain real quick so I'm able to do that and I'm gonna do this and I'm going to bring the whole path around if I can oh, I can't this is a bit of a pity um, so what I will need to do let's delete this bit again and see if we can do this a little bit differently though I want to build like a little kind of almost plaza type of thing so I'm going to delete all the pieces here there you go. And I'm going to bring this all the way down to the ground. There you go. And let's see if we can go as much as possible over here. That is exactly it. And then I'm going to put another one next to it so that we can make this little plaza over here. Now what we're going to do is select the grid. Select this one. And now we should be able to do this. Super. But what is not super is that I don't have my square edges that I wanted to have. So um, we need to go back over here turn on the square edges and then we are going to delete piece by piece and oops okay it seems like the square edges don't work on this side uh, well that's not too much of an issue but I want to have the square edges on this side so yeah fix it sometimes the game just needs a little punch okay and then it sh should do certain things okay now this is fantastic what I want to do now is I want to um, kind of give it a bit of a connection and I'm not sure why why it doesn't do it. There you go. There was the little connection piece. This is exactly it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit B and I'm going to do this. And hopefully if I delete this piece now, whoops. And I'm going to say again, first of all, flattened terrain should be on. And then I want to go and make this piece a little longer 
let's say three meters. And let's see if we can auto connect those two together. There you go, there, there you had it. It was already appearing on screen real quick. Let's see if we can do that again. You need to find the connection between those two. Uh, it is like with the camera, it's a little bit of fitting, but trust me, it's worth the wait. Uh, if we find it, there you go. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Now, you can also play around with the length a little if you want to. As you can see, the longer you make it, there it appears. And now, if I confirm, you will see something magical happening. Boom. It flattens the ground. Okay, it is a little bit too steep, okay? Uh, granted, this is too steep. You would never do it this way. It's like a very crazy ramp. But if this... Um, uh, this distance would be longer, it would create the perfect ramp for you. Now, why am I so happy about this? Well, you will find out that building um, uh, ground coverage on, on terrain is most likely very complicated in this game. And so this little trick uh, helps you to find the perfect uh, balance between these things. I'm just going to do something like this now to make it also look a bit more interesting down here. So let's just do this. And this, I'm not sure if we go to select the grid, if we can keep on building on the grid. Nah, okay, well, that was just a, like a little idea. Um, I don't know if, if, if sometimes square edges, okay, it doesn't even, doesn't even change that much. It, it, oh wait, but can we smooth it out? We can smooth it out though. Let's do that real quick. Let's see that we can smooth operation. There you go, look at that, awesome. Can we also smooth this out here? Uh, nah, it doesn't do it. I can only do it over here, but I don't want to. Okay, so this is the uh, little viewing spot down here. Very nice. And what we could try now, but I, I think there is not really that much to do, but we can try now to uh, smooth out this area over here. Let's see what is possible. Let's increase the intensity and then also increase the size relatively much. Uh, there you go. And just try to, you know, make it a bit nice looking around here. There's not really that much potential because uh, most of the things are a little bit odd. And um, what you also need to do is you need to do the terrain paint a little bit differently. Um, as you can see over here, it then automatically creates the long grass, which we don't want to. And I want a bit of soil going in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just paint the soil underneath the pathway because that is more realistic to have that here. Super nice. Okay, so what we can do now is we can either copy around our little... Uh, Thing we build over here so remember we did this so we could now go in and say duplicate and surface move and then we're just going to rotate this in a position that we like something like this and then we go into the advanced move and we search for the height first of all look at that and then we can well we can actually almost place it because it looks too good and as you can see it already creates like a very nice look to it. Um, however, there's obviously one thing I don't really like that much. I'm also wondering if I can somehow go into the building, confirm. Okay, there is no real way of getting quicker into a building than just move your mouse, uh, your mouse or your cursor to this edit mode. Um, and then I want to just delete these pieces that are on the pathway. There you go, already done. Look, this, this is how easy you can make areas look good like this. You know, pretty simple. Um, the only thing is I want to put a couple more rocks uh, here on the other side. So therefore, I'm just going to go select the group and edit it again. Remember, this is a copy of the group. And now you can use whatever you want it for. So I want to have duplicate and move. I'm going to go and say random rotation hopefully is on. See if there is anything. Random rotation is on. I want to turn off the angle snap and what I want to do then is I'm just gonna do this so it doesn't move over too crazy and I'm just gonna use this bit to create a little bit more of a nice texture here look I'm just gonna use this a bit more so there you go and also do the same here in the back so that it doesn't look so odd you know and we can also move it down this looks almost like a little bench and, you know, for funsies, we can actually put a bench in here so people will then sit on the stone as, you know, at, at least it looks like. And uh, put it also in this space. There you go. Look at that. This turned out to be looking super nice. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to copy ourselves the Brocken, duplicate and surface move. And then we're just going to throw that one down here and give this whole thing a little bit more of an overgrown vibe. There you go. 
nothing too crazy. And what we're going to do real quick is let's go to facilities. And within facilities, um, we are going to go to these bins, benches, and security items. And what we're going to do over here is we say all. Um, I'm kind of confused why it just tells me the tables. Hello? No items? What the heck? Is there like a filter enabled I don't know about? Oh, yeah, there is a filter enabled for whatever reason. I didn't do that. Maybe the restaurant did it on its own. Um, but yeah, whatever. We are going to uh, go out of the filters and then we're going to select the bench. For example, this one is kind of good because this one is going to disappear, as you can see, in here. There you go. I'm just going to place two. Boom, both are there in there. Uh, and now I want to have, obviously, for the other bench, I'm going to go with the European classic bench. We're going to have one here and one... Ah, uh, that's a little bit too much in in there. Let's see if we can... Nah, this is also not a nice spot. But maybe, maybe there. This is a nice spot. Okay, now I also want to have, like, a bin. Um... So therefore, I surprisingly go into the bin section, and I'm going to go with the classic bin. I'm just going to put this one, yeah, next to it, into there. Wonderful. Wonderful. We can also put a bin in here, just to give that a bit of a nicer area. There can also be a second one to the side here. There you go. And another one goes here. Bam. Okay, cool. Look, we are so much, so much advanced now, guys. This is exactly it. Before we put the animals in, I will do one more little thing, and this is easy peasy building for the backstage buildings. Um, you don't always want to build too, like, super detailed like this one. I mean, it's not super detailed, but you get the idea. Sometimes you just want to slam in a couple of walls to increase the scenery rating. That is all you want, okay? So what we're going to do over here is we are doing exactly this. We are going to select... Uh, um, this little keeper hut over here and then we're going to go as I said before we are going to go to the group and then within the group we are going to say okay let's edit the group okay so you can see this is all the buildings are in this group now what we're going to do is we're going to go to construction and within construction we are going to go um, only to the wall section over here okay we're gonna say everything and then obviously we need to get rid of hedge as a wording because no one needs that and then we have some stuff in here so for the backstage um, I want to most likely go with um now first of all i'm gonna go with everything and then i want to go with the breeze block and now what we can do and as i don't need to build like a blueprint or anything i can just go and build every wall i need first of all okay so we're just gonna put everything in real quick so there you go find the right space put it in i leave certain areas open because these areas will be for uh, windows and stuff, you know. And so this is why I'm just going to place these things down like so. First of all, there needs to go that one here. And we also need to do this on the back side. Some of the buildings also have like windows. You could have a window piece. I'm going to show you. So we're going to go into the construction again. And in this menu, you'll, feel, uh, you'll find also a shop piece like this one. So here goes that. Con Oops, that is a missed uh, opportunity here there you go oh i need to press b again and then ah uh, this is so odd why can i not undo this within the group okay never mind i'm just gonna go and hit edit again <clears throat> and then in the construction menu we will be having our wonderful piece again so let's search for that one which is again the breeze block wall shop front and then we're going to put that into the correct... There you go. This is the correct positioning. Now you have even the window nicely framed, okay? What we're going to do next is we're going to go in and select the wall again because we missed out on one, which I'm going to quickly put in. There you go. And obviously we want to have some gates. So therefore we are going to, and it's not a big surprise, look for the door frame, which is this one. And we're going to put the door frame right in front of the builds. There you go. One and two. And the same on the other side, by the way. Where are we? There you go. Oops. And just zoom in a little to have a bit more control. There we go. And do the same on this side. Just plop it in and then you're done. The buildings are nicely 
kind of nicely covered already. Uh, and we're just going to do a little roof over here and that's about it. So for the right one over here, I want to do like a bit of a bigger roof. So therefore I'm going to go out of this mode and I'm gonna go into the roofs and I'm gonna say all roofs. And um, just to give a bit of a bit of a you know change, we're gonna go with the clay tiled roof. They are also pretty nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the least slope one and we're going to make this. Um, you can either build this right on top, so what I'm going to do right now. So just go here and then always just quickly rotate it and we will have some kind of almost like a little awning on top of it. And then we could potentially do the same over here, you know, and just do it that way. But in my specific case, I want to reduce the grid size to two and I wanna do a little bit something like, you know, doing like this. And then we're going to leave out exactly one space in the center where we can put a normal piece in. Then we have something like this, you know. And then we're going to go and grab this very normal piece and put this exactly in the center of those two pieces. And then we've got a wonderful roof. Look at that. Awesome. That looks pretty fine. Now, in this specific case over here, I did this on purpose because now what you can do is, and let's do some um, multi-select option here. Wait a sec. There you go. Let's go to multi-select. And we're going to select the, mo uh, the, the roof pieces real quick. So one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. There you go, confirm. And what you can do now is you can actually use the surface move again, and we can move them up and down in some more steps. And I'm gonna go and say the grid height to 0.25. And now you can see, I have more control over the height. I'm gonna bring it all the way down so that there's just this one step above this edge where you can see part of the buildings. Like, like just one, okay? Zoom in a little and then one click above it should do the trick. And one more, there you go. Release it, confirm it, and now this building looks a little bit smaller, even though it is four meters. So that is like a little bit of a perspective trick, you know? See, this building on the right-hand side now looks way taller than this on the left-hand side. Anyways, we've done these little things. Um, and now, as I said, I wanted to do these, do these two shop fronts over here, which I'm going to quickly edit this building for. So I'm gonna go into the building, and now what I want to do over here with this building is I want to choose all these upper parts over here and bring them one down, okay? So therefore, I'm just first of all going to delete this piece in the center. There you go, okay? Um, and I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna make this like a little box. And so therefore, I just want to move this piece over here. Uh, shall actually go and also let me just um, snap options to the side because now it will be the perfect uh, combination for all sides. Okay, now obviously what I need to do is, and I'm gonna go back into edit mode. Sometimes I'm just too quick leaving these groups uh, and then just go back into the multi-select tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, whoops. Oh my God, this is so quick. Come down, come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. There you go. So let's just paint over all of these things. Um, and we're gonna make one deselection and this is gonna be this very bit over here. And we're gonna just uh, deselect this one because obviously that's something we don't want to, but the rest is fine. So we only have the roof. And now the same trick that I just applied a couple of seconds ago on the other building will be applied here too. We're gonna use the surface move. We bring the grids height all the way down. And now, oops, uh, we are just going to do exactly this. We're going to bring this down up until here. You can still see that it looks good for the person there. There's still enough space. We can actually, we could actually go and lower it down even more than this, you know. Uh, let's try to see where we are getting. If we lower this. Uh, yeah, that looks... That looks still good. Okay, this is this is awesome. And then we just need to delete uh, to move this thing over here. I'm just gonna have to advance move. And I say this one, I'm not sure why it always zooms so much out, but I just wanna have it like this. Awesome. So this is pretty, pretty beautiful the way it is, right? However, we need to copy everything around. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna say, um, 
multi-select everything, you know, every single bit in here. And I'm going to confirm this. And now I'm just going to say, oops, I'm just going to say duplicate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these pieces. Oh, I have to, first of all, bring my grid size down. Um, I'm going to bring this into a position like so. And instead of doing this twice now, you could just hit B and then multi-select everything again, you know, just like that. Broop. I'm not sure if 16 is correct, but uh, let's see. Was that eight pieces? Yeah, we deleted two, so that makes sense. And now you just do the same duplicate again. And now it is so much more easy to fit it into the position. And it's completely done. Look at this. Looks like a little kiosk with these things you can fold down. I really like that. This is a pretty nice looking kiosk, okay? So the only thing I dislike is the fact that there is like no gate for the person to get in. So this is why I'm going to delete this piece. Um, and I want to keep on editing the building. My bad. So I'm going to go back to construction. And in the construction menu, we are going to find a wall now. And we're going to find a brick wall. So let's go to walls, walls, and we are going to go to the brick wall. However, we are not going to use the brick wall one meter as we used previously. This time, we are going to use another piece. And this is, if you still want to build on the grid, you can this one. Uh, use this one. This is pretty damn good because you can do some finicky stuff with it. And it is also very nice in doing so. So we're going to move it into the position where it belongs so here but now we move it down and there you can see it we have like an open spot just over here okay so this is where the gate goes um, so hit B and we have this open gate and I want to make this gate now but therefore I'm just going to use something different and let's see if we can find some wooden pieces there were some wooden pieces I wanted to use so I'm gonna use the log wall for example the 2x2 two two meter panel, the 1x2 meter panel is actually the one we need. So I'm going to align this over here. You can see now we have the problem that random rotation is still on. The issue I had previously, there you go. And now as we do it, it's a little bit of a problem. You need to go back to the menu. And unfortunately, you need to select the piece one more time. Uh, and then the random rotation is disabled. You can't do it on the go, unfortunately. You just always have to go and find the piece again. But once you do it, you can see now it aligns perfectly. And then you can go from over here into the advanced move. This, by the way, is the only way of doing it um, properly in order to have your piece in the right position. And if you do then edit these things, never forget to go back into angle snap of some sort because otherwise it's not going to be 90 degrees. So I want to make it like so. There you go. I can also then go into the advanced move option again. We have already the right piece, uh, the right angle. I'm just going to move it in as if it's slightly open. There you go. You know, this could be like the little gate in the background. I don't want to overdo it right now, okay? Because then the tutorial would be uh, like, I don't know, uh, 20 hours long and we don't want that. So kiosk A is done and you can guess what we are doing right now. We are just going to say duplicate this one and we're going to bring this over. Now you can see, oh, what is this? Why is this in the air? What, what happened? Why is it not perfectly aligned to the ground? So we do that again. And this time we use the duplicate and advanced move and we are back in this version over here that you already knew because that also works with groups. So I'm gonna bring this over here into the advanced rotate. Um, it is on angle snap, so maybe we need to then just bring that back into it. Yeah, you can see we still need to adjust this to the building's orientation. I'm not sure if this is the perfect orientation. Uh, well, it does what it does, right? It does the job pretty well. Now let's see if we can move this even better into position. Let's see. Zoom in a little. That looks that looks good. Just so much so that it's not showing the bluish. There you go. Awesome. Look at that, guys. Now, we've done both of the kiosks over here. Um, and still you can see a bit of the backstage buildings. And we want to get rid of this in a second. Um, first of all, let's put down the staff path so that we have done the staff pathing. And uh, we are then about to put the animals in. And we are almost done. This is insane. I, I thought this is going to be like five hours. But we may actually end up uh, having like three and a half hours just as with the PC um, tutorial. Just we didn't get quite as much done. But this is obviously down to the limitations. Anyways, 
we were still pretty productive. And now let's go into the pathing options. So pathing over here, and this time around, we want to use the shoulder buttons to go to our stuff path over here. And uh, I want to reduce the length. I hate building with like the longest uh, option. And then we also need to disable flatten terrain, and then we will be back in business. And I'm going to use the staff path for that. So there you go, put one here. Actually, we can do it easily like so. You know, things will be connected. Very nice indeed. And then we're gonna do the same over here. I'm gonna place this one down, this one down too. Let's see if we can connect this. I think this is a little bit of a bit of a stranger thing to do. There you go. I'm just gonna try to bring these two together. Uh, let's see, there you go. Now we got it, we got it done. Okay, and now the easy bit will be to bring the whole thing over to the other side and then everything is connected to each other. So we're gonna bring this, and we, you know, we act just like as if this is the um, end of the zoo in our case, uh, because, you know, uh, otherwise this would be a bit of an odd thing to do. Now, uh, we are going to use my favorite piece now for backstage <laughs> in this game, and I already talked about this a couple of seconds ago. We are now going to go and we're going to use the bamboo, and we're going to use a mixture of the um, bangle bamboo and the fountain bamboo. So first of all, let's start with the bangle bamboo and we're going to use again the random rotation, which is going to be here. And you want to place these very close to the pathway here and just, uh, you know, drop them here again. So we can also, you know what, align to surface is off. This is good. Position rotation uh, can be off too. And I'm going to bring this down a tiny bit, not too much, like a tiny bit only. And we're going to place a couple of those along the path, okay? Not too many, just a couple, so that you have a bit of a outline, okay? Because they are pretty tall, you don't want to do them too often and too many. Just a couple, and also to make it not look too repetitive. Okay, so this is sweet, and now you're going to choose another one, which is the big one. This is like a huge one. I want to use a little bit lower. And with this one, be even more careful in what and where you put it. Uh, because this one is going to cause otherwise too much distraction from certain things. And we're going to place one here. Awesome. Um, and then, once you've done this, you can use that longer row. Uh, this one, usually I don't use with the random rotation. Because, well, obviously, uh, you need to put that uh, along a path, for example. And bring that down. And if you have random rotation enabled, just as I have, then... Sometimes it just rotates completely in the wrong direction. But we don't need this anyways. What we do need now is the fountain bamboo, and this is somewhere else in here, which we need to look for. You know, there are so many plants in this game. We have some of these cool bushes too. I forgot that we have them also as a free bit. Um, anyways, we're gonna go all the way down until we are with our fountain bamboo. This is our fountain bamboo. Now the fountain bamboo is much smaller. Uh, but also uh, not as easy to look through. And therefore, we're going to use this one and plop these right in front of the others, okay? So also make sure to make that a little bit more irregular. You know, there goes one here, one there, and you can also put some here in the back. So it's all about, it's, it's all about a matter of um, how you deal with the bamboo. And now I'm also going to use another one. We have like used one piece, but just to, you know, just to have a bit of a variation, I'm going to use the even smaller one here. And I'm going to sink this one all the way into the ground, just as if this would be growing from the ground. And just plop a couple more in here, just so that everything is nicely covered and hidden. And we're going to put another one here and another one here and another one here. Just put two in one and then we are done. Okay, let's hit B a couple of times and you can see this is now the corner of our zoo where everything is working. Awesome. Okay, now we need to bring in a couple of staff members that will aid us in bringing the animals into their dedicated habitats. So we are going to first of all bring in uh, one, two three keepers and then we are also going to have uh, a couple of caretakers one and two and three 
That is awesome. And before we do this, we need to bring one more building in. And this time I want to show you the blueprints. And what we're going to do with those, we're going to go to the facilities. Because it's easier to just do it that way than just do it in the blueprint place. I'm going to show you what. I want to have animal exhibits. And in my case, I want to have small exhibits. However, I'm really, I, I don't want to build this myself right now. Because we, you know how to build now. The tutorial is super long. So I want to have blueprints. I'm going to say blueprints only. And there we are greeted with a couple of nice blueprints. So the one I'm going to go with is, oops, let's first of all go out of this one. You know, we have a couple of nice ones over here. The new world exhibit is pretty decent, but the Planet Zoo exhibit is like super, super zoo vibes. And this is, I'm gonna put right in the middle here to really bring this plaza to, an, to, a, to a good end. Just gonna move it so that every little path is connecting. There you go. This is, this is fantastic. Look at that. And you know what we do? We can real, really quickly just press play. There you go. Now everyone has fallen down. Um, and then we go back to our nature tab. Because at this point, um, I feel like <clears throat> it already makes sense to put a bit of bracken or something else in the center there. To just, uh, you know, have a bit of a nice uh, roundup kind of look in in this plaza i, I just want to have the plaza look finished okay so i'm gonna go with um a one yeah a one is fine so and you know this this time as i said i'm just gonna bring this in spam a couple of these things in the ground here so there we go there we go, we've already done it and it looks good and it looks fantastic. I mean, fantastic is maybe a little bit too old for this, uh, but you get the idea. Maybe we wanna have like a tree in, in the back here because there's like a nice little area where we, you know what, we, we just put something in here, okay? Shall we? Because now we have done so much, we can actually have a little tree in here. Maybe like a birch tree or something. Uh, let's see if we can do this. So where, we, where, where do we get one from? Let's go through here. There's, oh, actually, this one's also pretty nice. Too. The elm tree is nice. Yeah, there you go. Put that one in here. That looks very zoo-ish, zoo vibey, you know? That is really fantastic. And now we want to have animals. As the last bit of our tutorial, we need animals. We've prepared everything. It looks really decent, looks really good, you know? And now we need the animals. And therefore, we're going to go to the, not really surprising, animal market again. And we talked about that. We want to have a bear and we want to have the salt water cracker belt. So first of all, let's go through here. Who are we are going to find? Uh, there is no one in here. So let's go to the next page if there is anyone. I mean, you can still filter. Obviously, you can use a filter and then go to the animal that you need. But in my case, I'm just going to click through here. Um, nah, do we go with the foremost and black bear? Yeah, you know what? Why not? I get it way too seldom. Whoops, I didn't want to favorite it. I want to purchase it. There you go. Oh, adopt it, I should say. Oh my god, we got our first animal. Look at that. Welcome to the family. Um, and I'm going to go with this one here too. Okay, but we want to go further in. And we are going to have... This is the Garial, but I didn't want to have the Garial. I wanted to have... Whoops, go back. Uh, is the Salty in here? Nile monitor or copy or oh, copy is just such a great animal anyways and let's go all the way down the saltwater crocodile there you go get a male one oops why is it there you go both of them are nice but we're not quite done yet because we want to also have exhibit animals right so we go for the exhibit market and i want to have like a, a boa yeah a boa is nice and we're gonna have those two and we're going to say send to zoo and now we're just going to hover over our habitat here and we say confirm delivery scheduled but you can see with these small exhibits it's right in there already created this small exhibit for us these small exhibits if we click on them they come with a couple of options you can see the exhibit condition is only at two percent the reason for that and this is why i need to hit the game on play is that we need to change a couple of things so first of all we can give the animal a bit more of enrichment items by just clicking these things on as you can see this uh, area in here changes they can see to the top right the lamp is enabled or disabled you can even better see that in the front now but we also need to adjust the temperatures and humidity as you can see the temperature is good humidity isn't so we need to change the humidity to a way higher value 
There you can see, and now our snake is doing a lot better. We can also uh, close these off if we want to. So for example, you could go in here and say, I wanna close this window and do, for example, a, let's say 3D facade. And then you can see from the interior, there is like this kind of stone facade, but the other side is just closed off, okay? But you can also do something else like, oops, um, so for example, the rainforest, then you get like this kind of rainforest backdrop, which is also pretty cool. They they actually, I don't even know when they added this in, but it's super cool to have more options like this. You know, you can also have like a Xerox and stuff like, yeah. I usually like these 3D facades the most. If you put this into a house or so, it looks kind of good. But obviously, if this is standing in the center of your plaza, you better do not want to have anything like this, okay? Uh, so that's that. So really nice, and as soon as we have animals, you can see there are guests coming into our zoo. However, um, I want to quickly drop a pause again, because I don't want to have this too crazy. We need to now bring our animals into the habitats. Now, if you click on the habitat itself, you will see there is no animal in here, you know? But what we can do is we can obviously always go really quickly to the animal management. And then in here, we can obviously say, ah, you know what? I'm gonna use this one over here, the uh, animal, and then uh, we can toggle the animal with the LT, and we can also do this with the other one, both of them. And now as we have both toggled, we can then go all the way down here and say, I'm gonna move them, and I'm gonna move them into this habitat, which it doesn't allow me to do. Well, why don't you do this to me? Hello, can you tell me why? Tell me why? Okay, I'm very confused to why this is not working, because usually this should be a fine habitat and everything is working, indeed. Yeah, it does tell me ready. Okay, let's just do that again and hit play. Sometimes it's a little bit weird because it, you know, you need to have the, the game on play. That is the same on computer. I don't know why sometimes this happens. Uh, but you can also obviously go to your animal market and then go uh, to the animals you have in store, and then you select those two animals, and then you can say send to zoo, and it doesn't do it. Okay, this is, why? Why doesn't it allow me to bring them in? I honestly have no idea why it doesn't allow me to bring the animals in. I cannot tell you. Hold on, it was my stupidity. For some odd reasons, the Animal Trade Center is not connected to the pathway over here. See, this is something mandatory because without a trade center, you will not be able to get the animals. So what we got to do is we just need to connect these two. I'm just gonna use the staff pass. And now as it's done, <laughs> this is so stupid. But now, I mean, you learned something. In case you occur with the same issue, you will now exactly do uh, know what to do. So let's go all the way to animals again, go to animal management, and then uh, we just uh, select these two animals again, one and two, for example, and we go all the way down here to move them, and we're gonna move them into the habitat this way around, it works. Then hit B again, and we go to the animal market. You can do this from the market too, as I said, so I'm gonna do both ways now, and I'm gonna say both salt water crocodiles, and now I'm gonna go and send them to the zoo, and those two go into this habitat, okay? So now they will be both delivered, and we can quickly uh, increase the time, so it's going to move a bit quicker. So you can see plop, plop, there are our two wonderful Formosan black bears in here. Uh, the Formosan black bears are already starting to run, and our two crocodiles are in here too. And I'm gonna really quickly stop the game because now we need to check if our animals actually have a good room for flourishing and also cannot escape. So we're gonna start with our bear over here. I'm gonna select the bear. And now if you hit the heat map on top, we can switch through a couple of toggles. And first of all, I want to see the traversable area to see if it can escape. And indeed it can. So you can see over here, it can actually climb out of the habitat because you can see there is no climb proof thing on top, which we need to fix. Okay, but this is good to know. We have now Hian, and Hian is otherwise doing quite all right. Uh, you know, enrichment items are missing, but we can fix this relatively quickly. And then we are going to do the same over here with our friends. And we go, oops, I'm gonna select, eh, 
Come on, I'm gonna select you, and we're gonna do the same thing over here. Let's check the traversable area. They're pretty good, you know, they cannot escape, but it seems like they can do everything else. Let's see if there is anything else to talk about. Uh, let's first of all go out of this view and then we can check if they can even deep dive. They have enough terrain, they have hard shelter, they have a space, they can do whatever they need and that is pretty much good. They don't do deep dive, I thought they would. That is a little bit odd, but oh it's not 4 meters deep. Okay, well well then in this case they will not deep dive because it's not 4 meters deep. Um, because they need 4 meters, but it's okay. I mean, you know, you get the idea that they would be able to dive. I explained this, uh, you know, quite a lot, so that is fine. Um, but what you can do now is, first of all, we are going to fix the barrier over here. Let's go to the barrier and then we're going to say edit barrier. And now I'm going to select this and... Come on, this and this. And is there one piece missing? Nope. And now we just go all the way down here and say climb proof both. That is awesome. And now we can go back to our berry over here, click the bear, and uh, let's see if we can check the heat map again. There you go, traversable area is all good, all nice and fine. So if we switch through here, you can see this one has no hard shelter, which is a bit of a pity and we thought, you know, we would give them a shelter over here. We now will do something for our animals, okay? So let's go to Habitat and in Habitat, we are going to search for shelter because that is something they will need. So you go all the way to the normal menu and you go to beds and shelters. And luckily the game is going to provide us with some blueprints which this specific time around we will actually use. This one is hilariously big, as you can see. This shelter is like 24 by 24 by 8, which is ridiculous. Um, and I'm going to use the 8 by 8 by 4. Uh, this is that one, which is still way too big. And we're going to lo lower this down into the ground quite significantly. Because this is still way than more than enough. I'm going to squeeze this in this corner and the bears will technically be able to go down there as well and should not have too much of an issue but what we also need to do we are going to give them a wonderful bedding and you can see here is the bedding what we want to use and going to use a extra large bedding for them give that to our bears and put it down below here so they can go there and have a little nap okay but what else will we do have um so i'm gonna show you something super easy now if you go to everything and you would then to be to disable the blueprints real quick to have an overview what is available for our animals there is a good tip now to basically go into the search bar and type in and you don't even need to type in the entire name but the for motion is basically enough to say FOMO because now it only sh shows you the items uh, who are that are relevant for the Formosan uh, black bear and so what we can do is we can just get a couple of those items and throw them into their habitat just so that they're happy you know just give a give them like this wonderful rolling feeder over here we can put this all the way there this is a nice spot too and then we can see what else do they love they could actually dive and um, get for some fish but in our case I want to give them like a little wind chime thingy uh, or cheem I don't know yeah is it chime is it cheem I don't know I'm gonna put this all the way on this top here uh, oh my god it's actually creating quite a bit of a <laughs> bit of a weird thing okay I think they can't even go here that is not what I wanted to have hello wait a sec I'm gonna undo this because that is not what I wanted um, because that looks a little bit odd. Okay, let's go back to the habitat pieces and I'm gonna give them this wind cheam thingy again. I'm gonna put this here. Okay, this time around the landscape uh, man manipulation wasn't too shabby. And we're going to use the tree forager as well in the back here. Okay, so this is done. So they have a bit more of enrichment. And now we can just quickly hit play for a second. Uh, and also let's make the game a little bit slower again. There you go. Okay, let's move them around for a second to so that the animal can basically get grips of it. And now we can see what is going on with social. Uh, space, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we don't deal too much with the space now because, I mean, you know, we have done everything. I mean, if this is too little space, I don't even know why uh, it is, but, uh, you know, 
I think, you know, I think it's fine for the moment, but what I want to go for is the plants. And as you can see, our plant coverage is not even enough, but the cool bit is you can enable the filters right away in here. So um, that is pretty good. So if you go back in here, you can say, uh, I want to have Asia, okay? And now the filter of Asia is set. And then you can go back and say tropical. And then you can go back and say temperate. And then you can go back and say, oops, Tega. And now everything should be set to the filters. We are going to basically control this real quick. If we go to the filters, you can see now everything has been set. Asia is set. And if you go to Biome, we have Tiger, Temperate, and Tropical enabled. Uh, and so now you can be sure that everything you pick now from the menu is very good for animals. So I'm going to go for the beech tree and just to give it like a, a huge tree in here. That is something our bears surely love. And then we're going to give like a wonderful bush. We can spam a couple of these bushes as well. Just give them a couple of bushes here. Uh, I, I really do hope Corrales would be proud of me. You know, bushes everywhere is something that is required every single time, okay? Then we can also give them something nice to climb because this tree over here is climbable. So we can give this to them as like a little climbable element. Just put it in a space where it looks nice. And now to give the habitat on the backside a little bit of a coverage, we can just put a couple of trees in here. But don't put them too close to um, the side because as they can climb, they would actually be able to jump out of the habitat by this. Uh, so it's very important to not do this uh, too often and too close to the barriers because they can literally jump over this. And specifically, if there is something behind where they could realistically just hang on to um, and then just climb over. So let's put that one in here. Now they're all good. They're happy. And what we need to do now is check one more time if everything works fine. So bear is moving. Nice. Let's move it quickly. There you go. And now we're gonna click on our bear and check again if everything oops if everything worked. So here you go. We're gonna check through here. Traversable area is good. We have some climbable area as you can see over here. Very nice indeed. They can climb some of the other trees too, but they cannot escape. Where am I even? There you go. They cannot escape. So that is awesome. So I think our Formosan black bears are doing very well indeed. Okay. So our last bit we need to do in this tutorial is actually to fit in everything we need for our crocodiles. Okay. So this is obviously over here. Uh, I salt water crocodile. So before we do anything else we just go to the habitat tag over here again or tab I should say and then what we're gonna do is hit filters and then you go to the filters and you say obviously you can imagine what we're going to do is we're gonna S A L oops uh, T W A oops uh, T E, uh, it also, the game gives you the idea already, so you can just hit that one. Um, that should weigh more than enough because we don't have, have anything else than salt water. And in here, you can also now um, search for some of the options we need. I said all, and then we're gonna go here and say, okay, you know, we're gonna give them like a mud bath here that they can use, very nice. And then we're gonna have some prey scent stuff here in the front so the guest can see it actually. And uh, what else do we have? We can have like this restrained feeder. That one looks also pretty damn cool. So let's rotate this whole thing around. There you go. And put that into this corner over here. That's good. Uh, hopefully they can still move around there. But anyways. Um, and then we can also give them like a rubbing pad. We can put this here. And then there is also some stuff for underwater, which is the underwater fish feeder, which we're definitely going to go and give them. So I'm gonna bring this here and just plop that into the water so they can grab some fish from underwater. That should all be good, you know. I, I don't think I need to give them more. And it's said that they have shelter underneath this thing, you know. Uh, they can have shelter there if you want to, but it's okay. Um, we've done this, they should be a lot more happy now. And now let's see if we can have a look what they need. Oh, look at that. They need enrichment. Well, we did give this to them. So let's hit play again. And oh, yeah, there you go. It now is able to go. Um, you can see disease, animal, discovered, vet requests, many things, tickets, prizes. I, this is now all the infos coming into the top left. Um, 
we don't need to care too much about. But if we go over here, you can see this time around, we have some other filters we need to set. Um, and in order to do this, we first of all need to get rid of all the old filters, okay? So first of all, let's just pause the game again and uh, go back into nature and see if any of the filters are still available. Yes, indeed. So we are basically going to get rid of all the filters and then we are just going to click on our wonderful crocodile here. Oops, where's our crocodile? I need to go out of the build. move, there you go. And then we just click in these things as filters and do the same thing again. I don't even know why I can't just multi-select these. Can I hold? Okay, that, <laughs> that doesn't work. I thought, you know, this would work in here too, but no, you just have to click them all one by one. So let's do that again go back down and now every filter should be set and now we can put in the things that this animal really loves and we're going to start with some of the coolest uh, sea lilies over here so just bring them to the water level a little bit more up there you go i hope that the random rotation is activated let's see yeah it is so we can just plop a couple of these things in just make this look a lot nicer also you know when the guests are looking around here I'm just going to spam these things in and zoom out a little. Yeah, there you go. Look, that is, that is super, super nice. Okay, so uh, we can obviously then also, oops, uh, that's the wrong button. Uh, we can also go in and have a lot of these uh, kettle reeds. Uh, these are very wonderful to use as well because they um, immediately change your scene and you can then just leave some spaces open so you dictate more or less where the crocodiles are going to float into the water because they will avoid running into these things otherwise. So that is uh, also a pretty good thing to do. Just spam them around here a little. And this looks already like a pretty much of a nicer shoreline. Um, you know what? It's also pretty damn good. Uh, why am I always changing, changing the menu? I'm so stupid. Uh, I wanted to have like one mangrove tree in here. Just like a, like a little special thing. Let's move that down a little in the reeds. There you go. And I feel like there's also one more bigger one. There you go. This is the one that I wanted to have. Because that one is also looking cool when that, that is placed down. It can actually be a little higher. Not too high though, but I think it's this one is looking really cool too. I quite like mangrove trees. They they add some character to your builds, so I really do like them. And then obviously you could also check in what else is in here. So as we have a bamboo, we can always use the same trick as we used beforehand to, you know, maybe hide a bit of the ugly wall over here if you want to. We can use some of these bamboos pieces just to, you know make this area appear a bit nicer so there we go that is wonderful and now we can also check if there's anything else we could use for these animals like as in oh look at them uh, we have some some of the cool little fern pieces and then we can just put some in here. Make sure to put them uh, wisely because otherwise your crocs will not be able to move. They have a very odd uh, let's say, a traversable area system. It's a very odd system. But what we're going to do now is we're going to make like a wonderful rock facade here in the back and just going to slam in a couple of these rocks here to make it look a lot more nice over our fence. So look at that. I'm going to lower this down. There you go. And I'm going to put one in here too. And then we're going to change our law, uh, rock piece so that it doesn't all look the same. I'm gonna make this a little bit higher. So as if there's like a big boulder hanging over. And we can just slam them in here too. And have a look how it all looks uh, right now. Yeah, that is pretty damn good, guys. This is pretty damn good. Look what we've achieved in like three and a half hours now, but this looks really, 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 really good. Like a couple of things now to finish off what we've done. I mean, you can do a couple more things, but I'm I'm going to show you some last uh, special bits now. Uh, so you will be left off with a full tutorial in, in every direction. So what I'm going to do over here is, and also why is there no option in here? No items. What is, what's the problem with the uh, filters? Is there any filter set to why? Uh, there is nothing in here. Hello, facilities. Where is the, what's what's the big deal? Where is where is the filter set? Why why do I not find anything in here? 
No, oh, this is, I know why. Okay, that is my, my problem. Sometimes I remember that I don't have, you know, uh, let's say blueprints off. There you go. Now everything is back. Look, it could have been so easy. Uh, and now we just go and, uh, first of all, take this one and put a couple of bins down because your people will be throwing stuff around like crazy. So you better want to have some bins. And also, I really feel like these bins always uh, finish up the look of an area um, dramatically if you have them placed down. It just feels so much more finished and 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 realistic and nice, you know. Uh, just a couple of those down. Should be, should be fine. Okay, so this is sweet. And I'm also going to put one here in the center and you'll see why in a second. So this is, this is perfectly fine. And now I'm going to use some of these picnic uh, thingies as well next to it. Here's one. I'm going to plop one down here and here. And also one. Come on, plop down there. Okay, fine. This is good. And um, since we're also at it, we can also put like a conservation thingy down. So some educational pieces are always very good to have. Um, so we're going to put this one zoop, all the way here into the corner. There you go. And what I want to have else is something to play for the kids, you know, make some paw, 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 paw patrol. Um, because, I mean, you're looking just at the bears. So let's put two next to each other uh, because, you know, kids being kids will not be able to uh, distinguish if that's good or not uh, waiting for the other so they can now play both. So what I wanted to do, and this is exactly what I'm doing over here, is I wanted to put one next to each other. Let's see if I can make this happen. One. Let's see if I can squeeze one next to it. Yay, that works. Awesome. Can I also... Yep. One. Can I put one to the back as well? Just... Oh, that is... That is sexy. I mean, let's go even closer to be a bit more precise. There you go. I need to play more racing games again on console. Then I will also be better in controlling my uh, my cursors. <laughs> that would do the trick as well. And now we're going to use some classic picnic benches as well. Because, I mean, there's so much space in here. We can also grant people access to some picnic tables. There is one. There is one. Maybe also here. You know. Just like that. That's, that's looking good. That's looking good, guys. All right, and now to just finish the entire thing off, um, I'm, I'm going to just use this bit over here. Let's use this bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just obviously duplicate and surface move. And I'm not sure if the random rotation will do its trick already in here. No, it doesn't. So we need to go inside of it, but it's okay. We can just go inside of this building or in the group, say edit. And then uh, once we're in the group and editing the group, you know, there you go. You can now select everything, confirm. And obviously you can now from over here, again, duplicate and surface move. And as we have, and just like, let's put this down a little bit more. We have the random rotation enabled. We can just spam it everywhere in here. You look at that, this is fantastic. This is looking so good. Okay, so that is that is exactly what I wanted to do and just have a bit more here, you know. It can overlap a little bit more, you know. You don't have to be that precise as on computer. It doesn't really make things too different. So, look at that, this looks this looks really, really good. And once you're done with this, we can also now go to nature and we are going to select a bush now. And um, first of all, I need to get rid of the filters because they will most likely be turned on. And, oops, now come on. Disable this one, disable this one. Sometimes it's not even that snappy. I, I, I wish it would be a little bit more snappy, honestly. Um, it just sometimes there's like a split second after you've done your input, but it may also just be this Xbox. But yeah, I don't know. I, I wish sometimes it would be a bit more snappy. Um, I'm gonna put a tree here. I'm gonna put another tree here. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. And now we're going to go and search for the bushes. There's the bush I wanted to use. This wonderful bush is awesome. Just going to sink it in, raise it again, so it's not going to cause any uh, issues here. And just put a couple of bushes in here, and the same goes on this side. And we are done. 
we are done guys this is fantastic this has been the tutorial and obviously now a couple of little things you know making sure that the right uh you know education thing is sorted like you go in here and just change something um what the heck is this uh excuse me i don't even know this from computer what the heck I... wait wait i i know this one I have to check if this one is available on computer too. I've never seen this. What a what a weird thing. Okay, um, but yeah, so you need to put these things down and then um, the education rating would go up and you can also, okay, just to make it completely fully covered, uh, we also have the facilities and in the facilities, you will have the option to go to education, which is this one down here. This is called the education. And in education, you, for example, have something like, and I'm gonna go for all, you have something like the education board, which is going to be one thing we're going to quickly put in here. Oops, I'm gonna rotate this one and put this here. And I'm gonna sink this down a little bit more so you know that the people have not an obstructed view. And then you just click on this thing once you're out of the menu, obviously, you click on the TV, just like so. And then you will be able to replace the image with one you have in your storage, or you just go in here and select the closest animal, which in our case is the Formosan black bear, and it automatically sets this thing. The same, you know, works for um, education, like for example, the education speaker, which is the one I'm gonna pl plop down real quick. I'm gonna plop this down here. And if we zoom all the way in on this thing and just click on it, it just works exactly the same. You click A, you select the Formosan black bear and it's gonna play some music and some informational text about the Formosan black bear. And if we then bring up the heat maps, you can say, uh, you can see that this is the educational coverage. And I love the fact that the game is also so clever to always bring up the heat map of the latest item you place down. You can also see there is some, some yellow uh, down here. And this is yellow because we haven't set the education item yet. So if I click on this one and I'm going to set this one, there's obviously only one uh, animal exhibit animal available. And so I'm hitting OK. And this is now the boa. All right, guys, after three and a half hours and this beautiful build in front of us, I am fully confident to say you are ready now to master Planet Zoo. The only thing I'm going to look for, because I don't know it either, is how do we get the UI covered for our sense in the moment. I'm just going to show if this is in here somewhere. Not really. So we have to check the menu real quick and see if there's all... So Zoo, pause, uh, browser, UI navigation, pitch, rotate camera... Multi-placement options, advanced move controls, path control, terrain controls, and barrier controls, and barrier gate. Okay, so is there an option to get the UI gone? I don't even know. Like, on computer, I do obviously know that. Let's see if there's any... Okay. Uh, not on here, not on here. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, um, I don't even know if there's a way of doing this. This is like, the, uh, there you go. Inspector, animal alerts, staff alerts, back. Okay, not sure how you do that. Um, I will find this out for you. All right, I didn't find out how to disable the uh, UI fully, but what we can do real quick is we can obviously choose to go into different camera modes. And if we, for example, choose to go for the scenic mode, for example, um, you can basically choose where to have the scenic center focus point, which in my case is going to be here. And now we can either say, uh, you know, do a rotation spin like this, you know, and then once you leave your controller going, it basically disappears and you have wonderful view of your zoo look at that this is this is absolutely cool and yeah i really hope you guys also can i can i slow down the spin oh wait if i okay this is interesting i'm jumping out of this mode immediately pressing b uh, but i wanted to go back to the scenic mode here you go and um, also spin speed there you go there's a spin speed one is a lot more 
a lot more, a lot more enjoyable. Uh, now, for the outro, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I spent a lot of time doing this for you, so hopefully you have a, a, a good feeling doing this and it was rewarding for you. There is a lot to this game, I understand, and this is a lot more finicky when it comes to the controller movements. However, I want to praise Frontier for a very, very, very good realization of this game on console yet again. Uh, Planet Coaster on console was already good, but this over here specifically uh, highlights again the capabilities of a game like that on a console. Yes, you have to get used to it. Yes, there is a lot to learn, but once you master it, it's gonna be great. And you can see with this zoo in front of you, this is only 2% of the complexity meter. Just saying, okay? 2% only of the complexity meter. This is fantastic because considering you can do 50 times as much as this is way more than enough and you've seen how much time we spend doing this. Again, if you found this uh, helpful, there are a couple of ways to uh, showcase uh, your appreciation. Uh, the best and easiest way is to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There is going to be so much more Planet Zoo content on this channel, uh, from console, from normal game, just inspirational content, tutorials and so on in the future, and other building games of course. And uh, if you're very generous and you feel very generous, there is the super thanks now for videos too, so you can basically thank the video with a certain amount of money that you you decide yourself and just click this uh, from the video or you become a member there are several ways of doing it however um this is it for the tutorial. It has been a super long video. And as also with my other tutorial, if you watched it till the end and you enjoyed it, please comment the golden llama camel. I will be doing something with this in the future. I have a fairly decent idea about this. So uh, let yourself be surprised by this. Anyways, what else can I say other than thank you so much for your ongoing support. And I wish all of you a very happy playing of Planet Zoo on console now. Enjoy the game, enjoy building. And if there's anything you need to know, drop a question down below in the comments. I'll be there to answer it. Thank you so much. Have a good time and goodbye.